Okay, colleagues, welcome to our special meeting to discuss ranked ballots. I'll look for any disclosures of pecuniary interest, please. I see none. We'll move our way through uh, the agenda. Of course, there uh, are no recognitions, no review of confidential matters to be considered in public. Uh, don't believe we need to go in closed session at this time. Uh, we have no minutes at this time to confirm, and so we'll get to communications and petitions. I imagine we're referring that to the pertinent area, so that'll come up on screen. If we could have a mover, please, and a seconder. Moved by Councillor Usher, seconded by Councillor Armstrong. Any discussion? Let's call, yes, Councillor Park. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. There was just one comment in the, the public feedback that drew my ire, and it said this change would be hard for old real voters to understand use the tried and true method that works. I take exception that not all voters are real voters. So just for members of the public when making comments, just think about everybody before you speak sometimes. Words for all of us to live by. Thank you. Thank you for bringing that to uh, council's attention, to the community's attention. Other speakers, let's call the question. We are voting. Councillor Squire. Vote if you got them. The lady not anyone? Just Councillor Squire. Just why you want to vote closing the vote and the motion carries 13 to 0. Okay, uh, colleagues, uh, motion of which notice is given. There are none. We'll move to reports. I want to point out that Councillor Zaifman uh, was in touch with me earlier today. He's intending on being here. He'll be a little bit late, and he wanted me to point that out at the beginning of the meeting in case people were looking at his empty chair and I guess counting speculative votes. He intends to be here as soon as he can, and uh, I know that we'll welcome him when he gets here. So we're moving to the 16th report of Corporate Services Committee. A couple of things. Uh, we could have a two-hour debate. We're at council. Typically, it's protocol for the chair of the committee to stand. I don't think we need Council Deputy Mayor Hubert to stand for the entire two to five, no longer than seven hours <laughs> remaining in this debate. Uh, and so if it's just the same to everyone, I'm going to allow him to keep his chair. And also we had some discussion over the weekend past about uh, suspending the rules of council to allow multiple uh, times of speaking if, if you choose to, if you need to. I still want to keep it at five minutes each, uh, but we'll need to suspend council rules in order to do that. And uh, we can do that formally. If you'd like to, thank you for making the motion. Councilor Park, it's up on screen. And we'll look for a seconder. Councillor Van Holst, I'm sure, is going to second that. Let's see. Moved by Councillor Park. Second by Councillor Van Holst. Any discussion? You can only speak once. Okay. Let's uh, vote on the motion before us. <coughs> Voting. Closing the vote, the motion carries 13 to 0. Someone did point out to me that this could open it up to a filibuster-style debate. If we go beyond 12 o'clock this evening, then we've missed the cutoff. So I want to just bring that to everyone's attention. I pointed out to them that if we felt that was happening in the next seven or so hours, we could always reinstate uh, our one-time rule. So uh, I would like to, at this point... Um, start a speaker's list unless there are any brief comments from staff. I'll, I'll go to welcome home. It's our city manager, Martin Hayward. Uh, everything's fine. Uh, nothing happened while you were away. And we hope you found everything in really good order on your return. Welcome back. Uh, through the chair uh, and through your worship, the I will say for the benefit of Councillor Squire, I did make it to the Wolves Stadium. So just so you know. <laughs> um, 
In terms of the, uh, the uh, rank ballot debate, uh, whatever obviously council decides, uh, administration is going to do our very best to implement. But before you get going in the debate, just wanted to point out some, some concerns that administration has so you have them as you enter into the debate. First of all, the development of the algorithm and the equipment, uh, none of which is available that has been certified in Ontario for Ontario elections. That means that we will be first out of the gate. That means that the potential cost of developing these algorithms and or this equipment could be a lot higher. One of the suggestions we have is we may want to approach the province and see if there's any funding available from them in order to uh, help us out with that. We estimate it could be as much as $500,000 more. So I just want you to be aware of that. Um, also, to be successful, uh, council... Uh, should authorize the city clerk in her role as a, a deputy returning officer or whatever the title is that she has um, uh, to retain the resources that she feels best meet our needs so we can get going on this, so we can do the testing that's necessary. And that means software and hardware. We may have some con time constraints, so that may require that she goes out single source and not for an RFP. I just want you to be aware of this because if we do want to move on this, then, then we'll have to move quickly. Uh, also, uh, we'll need to add staff resources for education and communication. That's going to be a huge element of this in order to get it right and get it moving forward properly so people understand what's going on. And then uh, I'd like uh, Council to support the clerk by requesting from the province part that they pass specific legislation uh, to allow flexibility in a recount should that be necessary. Otherwise, we could be in a difficult situation if something fails at the last minute. And I'll maybe... Uh, look to the clerk to see if she has anything to add to that, but uh, I just wanted to put that on the floor for you. Thank you very much, Mr. Hayward. I'll look to the committee chair to, well, the motion will be up in a moment, and also to make some uh, opening remarks. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just in terms of processing as forward, as, as council knows, committee uh, did not uh, bring forward a, a recommendation. Uh, it, it lost on a tie. And so, Mr. Chair, maybe an idea, Mr. Mayor, might be that we actually handle 2A and B, which are basically receiving um, uh, the written res uh, the presentation of the clerk and the written submissions of the public, and just kind of deal with that and get it off the, off the plate. Uh, I know one of my colleagues on the committee would like to bring a motion forward um, after that. But uh, let me just say uh, to you, Mr. Mayor, and you were there, that it was a, a good public participation meeting. Um, you know, not to suggest that we should have them on Saturdays on a regular basis, um, but it was a good public participation meeting. I think we've been able to get um, some of London engaged, and obviously there's a lot going on, um, and it'll be an interesting uh, debate uh, this evening. I'm not going to make my comments on, on um, the, uh, the motion that may or may not come forward at this time, um, so I'll save that until later, but I will move... Uh, items 2 uh, A and B at this time and then uh, look to a member of the committee to put a motion on the floor. Great. Uh, so that'll get things moving. Technically speaking, I'm advised, of course, by the clerk that uh, we can move to A and B. We need to have an amendment, which would be C, at which time, uh, if we have that amendment come forward in a second, it will, the bulk of the debate would be on that C. And uh, I'll call the motion separately. We can deal with A and B and then see if, if, yeah. if you want to vote against that. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That, that's our intent. It's just to let's get the procedural stuff out of the way and, and then move forward. And, and I hope that we have uh, uh, a very respectful debate tonight. Great. I'll look then to speakers. I did see Councillor Armstrong and I see Councillor Morgan. Councillor Armstrong, I... I Saw you first. No, I'll, I'm, I'm good with A and okay. B. It's on C. Excellent. Okay, say. thank you. So, uh, Councillor Morgan, others? Well, so, so we can actually debate this. I'm going to move an amendment um, to the committee's recommendation to add a C that the city clerk be directed to bring forward a bylaw at the special municipal council meeting on May 1st, which is tonight, uh, for the purpose of providing the necessary direction to implement a ranked ballot process for the 2018 uh, municipal election. I believe I have a seconder on that, and then we can have our debate. 
Okay. Uh, is there a seconder? Seconded by Councillor Park. And I'll start that speakers list then. Councillor Armstrong. Just to move things along, I think I'll, I'll just be making a couple quick points um, because there may be multiple opportunities to speak if necessary. I, I just wanted to first of all point out that, um, and this is research that was uh, put together, and to my understanding, there is no province that, there, no province in Canada that has ranked ballot system. There is no city that has a ranked ballot system. No city in Ontario that has a ranked ballot system. In fact, and many cities have specifically looked at the issue, Toronto, Guelph, Ajax, Barrie, Timmins, Sault Ste. Marie, Sudbury, <coughs> North Bay, Thunder Bay, Brampton, Waterloo, Kitchener, Cambridge, only London has gotten to this point. So I ask, why are we special? And I certainly believe, and in many, and I've stood in this council chambers in the past and said London should be first. We should be a leader in other issues. I don't think we should be a leader in this issue. All these cities, to a de one degree or another, looked at this and said, no, thank you. And a lot of it had to do, and I'm trying to simplify the message here, Your Worship, a lot of them had to do with the real cost of going to that system. Here it says, ranked ballots would add $3.5 million to Ottawa's 2018 election cost report fines. They said, no, thank you. Now, we heard tonight, we don't have a real number because we're going to have to perhaps go out in single source. So let's say the majority of council supports this. It's done. We're into it. So we go out in single source. We may be very surprised at, at what the cost is for, and I'm not a computer expert, but when you tell me that somebody will have to um, come up with an algorithm to, and develop it, and, and then test the results, that can get very expensive, developing a platform to do something like this. Very expensive. So if it comes back that it's not 500,000 is more than what's already being suggested, but maybe a million, maybe a million and a half, then what? Then what? I don't think that's a price that this municipality needs to pay. I think our system has been working well. And if ever we were to decide to look at another system like this, I certainly would like to see an opportunity to see it on the ballot so Londoners can decide how they want to vote in the future, not politicians. So I really want you to think about what you're getting us into. Sometimes you travel down the road and sometimes you have to come to a stop and realize it's, it's time to turn back. And I think we need to uh, turn back on this one. All these cities talked about this issue. So ask yourself, those who want to support this, what makes us special? That we would be the only ones in Canada, the only ones in Canada that would even take it to this, to this stage. Fair enough, we looked at it. You don't have the real cost, so you're voting on an unknown, unknown. So if it moves ahead, and if the costs skyrocket, yeah, I'm sure it'll, the results of that will be seen maybe on a ranked ballot. So in any event, I'll leave it for that. I just wanted to stick with two key points because cost and if, I mean, all these other cities must be wrong, right? And we're the only city that must be right. I don't think we are in this case, Your Worship. I think we need to pass on this. Thank you, Councillor Armstrong. I have up next Councillor Cassidy, followed by Councillor Van Holst. Anyone else? Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I just want to um, try to answer some of those questions. Uh, first of all, I think London is special. I, I do. Uh, in 2010, the voter turnout was something like 39%. And in the 2014 election, that went up to, I think, about 43%. It's still not 
It's still not a huge amount. It still shows quite a bit of, of maybe apathy out there, but, but I think compared to other places in Canada, we saw a pretty good increase in voter turnout here in London. It shows a level of engagement in this city that is on the rise, and I think that's great. I think it shows, yeah, London is special. And I want to point out why we're different, why we're, why we're the only city seriously considering this. Because we've been talking about it since day one. Some councillors talked about it during the election campaign. We've been talking about it since day one. It's in our strategic plan. A lot of these other cities haven't even considered it until the, the provincial government changed the Municipal Elections Act. So they started thinking about it and they realized, hey, we haven't put any thought to this at all. We really don't have time to put this in place. Not only has London been talking about it, not only has this council been talking about it, we implemented it to, to choose uh, people for advisory committees. Councillor Morgan brought it forward from at one of our very first corporate services committee meetings. We've been doing it as a council. I think we've been talking about it long enough, and I think it's time to make some change. Councillor Van Holst, Park, then Usher. Thank you very much, Your Worship. And uh, through you, I think I'll start with just a couple of questions um, to, to staff. Um, one is uh, just about the technology. Now, we've said that there's nothing that's been certified, and I, I don't know how, how I should feel about that, that statement. So uh, I'd like to ask what, what it takes for something to be certified or not. Is that a difficult process? Is that, is that something that happens often every time we do uh, uh, use a new technology? Is the last time we used, were they well, let's were they get certified? An answer. Let's get Thanks. an answer for you. Hello. Through you to your worship. Um, so there is no existing certification in Canada or in Ontario. So each uh, each election, there we rely on the standards set out by uh, the city clerk to. It's called acceptance testing and logic and accuracy testing. But in our RFP process, when we go out and we look at vendors, we also look at various certification processes for voting systems in other jurisdictions, specifically the United States. At the federal level, there's um, the EAC, or the Electoral Assistance Commission, which is an independent bipartisan commission, which is charged with developing processes to improve voting systems and voter accesses. Basically, they accredit and they certify voting systems. At the state level, each uh, vendor and voting system must go to the Secretary of State for each state, and they must certify the use of their technology. So because we don't have any certification process in Canada, we look to sometimes the um, other jurisdictions, such as the ones I mentioned. Okay, thank you. So um, if we're using other jurisdictions to do the certification, then there really is no way for us to have a product that's certified for the Ontario election. We're just going to have to come up with something ourselves. Is that, is that correct? Well, no, we look um, before procuring a, a, a product, we, we look to these, to these certifications. And right now we found no evidence that the EAC has certified a system of ranked ballot elections. They currently do not have the standards for, or do they test for the vote transfer and the ranked balloting process. They can certify the machines that we use, but, uh, and they have certified the machines that we use and the machines that we will use, but it's that background algorithm and the software that the systems tie into that they currently do not certify. Okay, thank you. Sorry, I'm gonna have to explore this a little, a little further because I, I'm aware that in the United States there is a number of cities that use ranked balloting. You know, Minneapolis, for instance, like San Francisco, for how, how is it that they can run their elections without the certification that, that we're looking for? So in Minneapolis right now, they use a system um, with, the, with a vendor called Election Systems and Software. 
They have similar machines to what we have used in the past. The DS200s is what they refer to. So the, the votes are tabulated through the machines and they're placed inside a software. That software is verified and certified by the EAC and the Secretary of State. Uh, the machines are as well, but what isn't is the algorithm. So what they do once they get all the results together in that software is they export it to a, a Microsoft Excel and they apply the algorithm at that point. Then they import it back into the system and put it out through the results software. So what you see on the, the website. So what they do is they they have everything else certified except for that, that piece where they export the data and they seek independent verification from uh, an election auditor and they do that on their own accord and that's how they uh, count the ballots through uh, an automated process. Okay, thank you. So, but those, those very machines that they use are, are available to us now? Yes, they are available to us, and um, we actually have used them in the past. Um, all right, thank you. I think uh, I've taken enough time. I'll... Okay, thank you. Councillor Park. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, some talk was spoken earlier about unforeseen costs and, and those sorts of things. It's, when I think of any sort of a corporation, their main goal in life is to make money and they want to make as much money as humanly possible. So if we are going to go out to a vendor to say, hey, we need a new algorithm for the City of London to move forward with ranked balloting, I highly doubt they're going to want to gouge the first municipality coming to the table when they want to make as much money as possible trying to incent other municipalities to take on the same technology, the same way of voting in the future. I think that the, the worry of cost is something that's being flashed about, and I don't know that there's much credence in behind it. When earlier at the public participation meeting last week, I talked about how we have a strong digital creative sector in London, where they can take an idea from a piece of paper and turn it into a game for the player to use within eight months. A game is a heck of a lot more complicated than this algorithm that we're talking about. It takes graphics, design, motion, all sorts of different things. And if they can take an idea from paper and turn it into a product that people can buy, have in their hands and use, then I think the thought that we don't have enough time is a bit of a red herring for me. I won't go into the merits of uh, going forward with ranked balloting because I know a lot of my colleagues can do that much better than I can. But for me, I'll go back to the last municipal election. I had a really easy time with a lot of my competitors. We had a very cordial election. Some people around this horseshoe did not have that. Some people didn't make it past the, the first go round of dropping their name off the ballot because of the negativity surrounding them in the election trail. That shouldn't be a thing. We shouldn't have to wear combat gear to combat ad hominem attacks who should be debating on, based on policy. And in my view, going forward with a ranked ballot, having that more cordial uh, election process just means that more people who are more fit and more um, open-minded to better ideas and solutions to move our city forward is the best way to go forward on that. So like I said at the public participation meeting, I'm ready for London to go forward with ranked balloting. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Park. Councillor Usher. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, one of the things that I hope that we will do is to respect everybody's opinion around this issue because each of us might have a different opinion. And I believe that I have an open mind, and I don't want anybody to tell me that I don't have an open mind. I believe that I look at leadership, and I don't want anybody to tell me that I don't know what leadership is. I understand what first off is, so, or taking the lead and so on. And if I differ from somebody else, I would like that to be respected because I respect everybody's opinion around this horseshoe. I just want to say that because of the fact that I, I sense some negativism and criticism for individuals around here already and they're just getting started. Um, Mr. Chair, I want to say that we are not the first uh, Canadian municipality to use rank balloting. Uh, there has been others in Calgary and BC who have used it in the past. Granted, it was in the 20th century, not in this century, but they have. And there are nine American um, municipalities that are using it right now. San Francisco and Minneapolis are the two big ones, and there are seven small ones. There were 50, 15 of them, but six of them dropped out and decided that they, they have given up on that because it just doesn't work for them. <clears throat> I think that my opinion and the opinion of people I spoke with is, uh, 
is that we need to have confidence in this system, uh, in the voting system and the process. And we need to make voting simple for our constituents. And I say for our constituents, I mean for all of our constituents, the young, the middle-aged, the seniors, people with disability, uh, students, university students, college students, and everyone who has to vote. We need to make it simple for them to vote. Um, it's not just a matter of voting. It's a matter of understanding it and applying it. And most of the people who I've spoken to don't believe that rank balloting could do that at this time. Maybe next, maybe next, um, next year, or not next year, but the next term, perhaps. Um, we have to understand that this is not all it seems to be. Uh, I heard some of my colleagues imply that it is very costly. And I do believe that it's going to be very costly. Uh, despite what we are hearing here, I do believe that this will be more than a billion dollars, perhaps even up to $3 million. I don't have those figures right now, so I can't tell you for sure, but I do believe it's going to be costly. It certainly does not guarantee a majority. It guarantees pr plurality, but not a majority. And I'll give you an example before I finish my speech here. Uh, I believe that it opens the door for negative campaigning, and I could give you a lot of examples like that. I have experienced that many, many times, and I'm sure that if this comes around, I'm going to hear more about that again if, uh, in campaigning. But it does not necessarily help highly skilled people to run for office either, because the way it is is that a lot of the highly skilled people tell me that they're not going to vote, they're not going to put their name in for something of this nature where you're going to select first, second, and third because of the ne negative campaigning. Um, it definitely lowers the vote, voter turnout. Uh, the experience that we've had uh, in other places, particularly in the United States, is that it lowered the voter turnout. Uh, uh, yes, uh, after, I think it was Minneapolis tried it, the first year it went up. Uh, that was because they had something on the ballot for gun control. But the next year, it took a dive. And everywhere else, it has taken a dive. So it doesn't really work from that perspective. Uh, it increases spoiled ballots. Everywhere that I have looked at in the United States, all of them, the spoiled ballot has increased from uh, about one point something percent to up to eight point something percent. And you know that happens because of the fact that you're asking people to go one, two, three. Uh, winners are decided by plurality. We may want to call it majority, but it is not. And I'm going to explain it later on. And I, like I said earlier, it, uh, it encourages negative campaigning. We heard staff said that they do not recommend it. And there are reasons for that. You heard, heard Mr. Hayward identify a part of it. And you heard some of my colleagues said it just now, too. But it's, there are lots of reasons for that. Uh, there is no federally certified machine currently available. And I hear what our staff is saying. But vendors will want their priority or propriety to whatever they decide. Uh, and whether it's in London or whether it's somewhere else, they will. And we have to be able to respect that. And like our staff said, there are no algorithms to tabulate rank balloting. A third party can definitely rec accommodate that. But whether or not it will be, t we'll have time to test it or not, that's a different story. I don't think that we will. And we don't have any rules drawn up that is simple enough to be able to conduct this type of uh, balloting. It needs rules. We don't have any rules at all. And they have to be created. So Mr. Chair, I have more that I want to say. And I notice that you're putting up your hand. So I will ask for an extension. An, I will yeah. ask for an extension. Okay. I'll come back. So I defer Moved to by Councilor Turner, seconded by Councilor Van Holst. All those in favor? OK, carries. Thank you. Thank you. So I want to remember that the, the um, machines cannot detect your and my intent when we go to vote. It cannot detect it, voters' intentions. So when the voter makes a mistake, the machine won't pick it up. And I think that that's something that we need to be able to consider when we're voting one, two, three. And all these things, to be able to fix it, to be able to bring on new machines, to be able to come up with a new protocol, to be able to, net, to test it, needs dollars and time. I know that I have heard around this horseshoe that it would cost something like $322,000. But the way I figure it, there's a lot more money than that. And I'll explain a little bit of that. But it will also take a lot of time. And I don't think that we could get this done for December of next year or, or, or October of next year, I should say. 
So there's training that is required, and all the places that use it need to have training. In our case, all the people whom I've spoken to, they talk about training. And we're not talking about training in a newspaper, via the media, television, and so on. That's not enough. Um, confusion is one of the worst things that we can have when we, are, when we are going to ballot. And a lot of people talk about the confusion if they don't get the proper training. And I believe that everyone has a right to vote. We cannot impede it by making it more difficult for them to accomplish it. So for me, every individual need to be informed and train how to vote. One might say, we are thinking too low of indiv individuals, but, but you know, every time we have a federal government um, election, we have people who go door to door, door to door to explain to people what they have to do. And that's the type of training that we may need here. It's a steep learning curve for something like this that is changing from just one X to one, two, three. And it may require this door-to-door -door training that I'm talking about, including, Mr. Chair and colleagues, in a person's own language. They need, we will need to hire additional people to do this. A lot of the people whom I spoke to who speak a different language said they don't understand it and it's confusing and they would like to know it in, in their own language. So we cannot do this training. And, and that, by the way, will cost about $3.50 per person, per voter. Think about it. Think about how many voters we have, and other places it has cost them $3.50 per voter. So we cannot do this training at the ballot box, by the way, because they're not allowed to talk to the voters when they come in. Um, and, and, and the other thing is that we may not even be able to do it one time. We may have to do it the second time around. Again, I say to you, that's where the millions of dollars will come in. So let's consider the res response from the public that we've heard. I don't know about you, but I've spoken to the young, I've spoken to adults, I've spoken to seniors, I've spoken to ethnic groups, visible minority, and women. And I've also spoken to the young people. In general, their comments is, is confusing. So why are we considering it? That's what they ask me. Do we have more, don't we have more important things to spend our time on? I believe so, but we want to do this and we need to get it over with. I have yet to hear one of these people say to me, it is as easy as one, two, three. Nobody has ever said that to me, and they really don't want to do it. So based on the results of the survey printed out in our report, in this very report here, almost 57% said no to the rank balloting. That's where they make the statement. 57% of the statements were negative. And they say to leave the, the, the system as it is. So most people told me that they are not interested in figuring a second and a third choice, Mr. Chair and fellow colleagues. In fact, many of them were happy when they did not have to pick four for a former board of control, or two when we had two councillors per ward. They were very, very reluctant. They were happy when those were removed. So they say, just choose one. So we say to them, well, just choose one if that's all you want. So I say, well, what's the use of having this rank balloting if you will allow them to just choose one? Interestingly enough, my uh, research indicates I, that. I just, I don't want to cut you off, so I'm just going to look for another extension. We're at 10 minutes. So a motion for extension. Councilor Turner, Councilor Hopkins, all those in favor? Opposed, if any. Thank please you, please. My research indicates that about 33% of voters vote for one person. That is, for one person, even when they, I'm talking about people in a rank balloting system. And uh, voters turn out decrease the rank balloting. So winners don't really get the majority of the votes. They get, a, like I said earlier, a plurality of votes between them and the last standing because all votes are not used at the end. For example, in one ward in San Francisco, there were 21 candidates and a total of 22,550 votes cast. After 20 rounds, because there were 21 candidates, so they had to have 20 rounds, the elected person ended up with 4,321 votes. And the next person ended up with 3,879. Hardly a representation of the 22,550 votes who voted. In another case, there were 13 candidates and a total of 25,067 votes casted. After 12 rounds, 
the elected person ended up with 8,865 votes, and the next person ended up with 7,528. Again, much less than the total of 25,067 votes. So you could see that a lot of voters did not, were not counted in that part of the winning team. So to make this even more confusing, we are asking people to use ranked ballot voting for mayors, for ward councillors, and one choice voting for school board. That's amazing. How confusing that's going to be when they go to the, to the ballot. So Mr. Chair and colleagues, I and the majority of my constituents, and apparently the majority of London voters and our staff who have to create the system do feel that we are not ready to go with ranked balloting voting for the 2018 election. Thank you. I hope you heard what I said. I listened to you, and I hope you listened to me thoroughly. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Park will now rise and appoint a personal privilege. Thank you. I just wanted to provide some clarification based on the, the comments that I heard uh, from the councillor. I just wanted to make sure that everyone knew that when I was talking about negativity, I was talking about in an election campaign. Of course, not around the horseshoe, because I respect what everyone has to say. Councillor Squire. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just want to um, echo what Councillor Usher said, and I hope my comments will be, will be at least respected. Um, and I don't, um, I will rise again if people use it as an opportunity to tell me why I'm wrong and they're right or, or uh, argue in that manner. So, and I'll also have the opportunity to rise again if, if I need to. I took this very, very seriously. And the reason I took it very seriously because it was the right of the people that elected us to vote. It wasn't myself making a decision about me and what I do and, and what the procedure of this council was. It was the actual right of those people to vote. So when we started using ranked balloting at committees, first of all, I haven't enjoyed it very much um, because I'm one of those people that if my third choice gets in, I really would probably want to say, oh, I really didn't want to contribute to my third choice getting in because that's not the person I wanted to get in. So I haven't particularly enjoyed it myself, but I tried to put my personal feelings aside and said, look, what do my constituents want? What do the people that elected me want? So I've gone out to them as best I can to get their opinion on ranked balloting. I made myself available to them, I've talked to them, and I can tell you that today, 60% um, are against us instituting ranked balloting and 40% are in favor in, of people that I have heard from. Now, I think that's somewhat generous, I have to say, to the 40% because I also put in and included every one of the identical emails that I got, the ones that were, the person said, I am a resident of your ward and then everything was identical after that in terms of the email. So I really had no way of finding out if they were from my ward or if they knew me or if it was just somebody doing them and adding a name on them, but I included them. So that's, that's important to me that my constituents are not at this time in favor of ranked balloting. The other thing that I've found um, somewhat difficult is that this has really been less about public information from my point of view and more like a campaign. Um, that from the get-go, people who were in favor of ranked balloting campaigned for it. Um, and they ran it like it was a campaign. And that's okay, that's all right. I tried not to do that. I always accepted people's input and went along with it. But I can tell you this, and I don't want to go through all the things that Council Usher said, I will later, but for every point someone made where they said emphatically, it does this, there's someone on the other side who can provide me with research that says the opposite. Absolutely says the opposite. So I don't think there's research right now or something that definitively tells me that uh, rank balloting is better than the system we have right now. So from my point of view, someone has to prove to me why it's a better system. Why does it work better? Why is it so important? What does it do? And unfortunately, I haven't been able to find that. There's been a lot of discussion about what it does. Um, certainly, there's been discussion about how many votes I got in the last election and the legitimacy of me as a councillor which is kind of negative campaigning in favor of ranked balloting, um, which I find kind of unusual when everybody says there's no negative, negative campaigns. Well, there was even negative campaigns um, about this. In fact, someone on the radio, an educated person at one point, was getting a little flustered when he was arguing in favor of ranked balloting. And he said, 
Maybe I'm so passionate about this because I live in Ward 6 and Squire got elected with 28% of the vote. Wow, that was great to hear. I would call that negative campaigning. So this idea that everything is going to be positive, wonderful, beautiful if we have ranked balloting, I certainly haven't experienced it yet. Uh, maybe I will when it happens, but I haven't experienced it yet. So all of these statements that it's going to change this and it's going to change that, I can tell you there's emphatically two sides to it. But I can tell you I have experienced the negative side of campaigning for ranked balloting. I've certainly experienced that. I found it unusual when I went to the public information sessions and people were handing leaflets out outside the, uh, outside the door. So I thought, maybe this will give me some positive information about ranked balloting. So I got one. It's from a company called 123 Ontario. And here's what it said. Ranked ballots ensure that the winner actually has the support of at least 50% of the voters. Now, we all know that's not accurate, right? There's, there's, they, don't get 50, they don't have to get 50% of the voters. They get 50% of the votes that are left at the end. So that's not accurate. I thought that was unfortunate. But this is the one that really caught my eye. No more fake winners who are opposed by the majority. Well, that's not positive campaigning from my point of view. To, so I guess I'm one of those fake winners. One of those fakes who's sitting around the council table. Really unfortunate from my point of view. So when people start telling me how a positive this well, is. I look for a motion for extension. Councilor oh, I'm Palmer, sorry. Councilor Armstrong, all those in favor. Go ahead, Councilor Squire. Sorry to cut you off. Yeah. So when people start saying to me, you know, campaigns are going to be more positive, I think they're going to be the same politics that we've always seen. If you're, on, if you're on a ballot with someone who's sympathetic to your point of view, you're going to try to get that person to be working with you, you'll be one to get ahead of the person in front of you. Come on, let's not be naive here. It's going to be, from my point of view, a little bit similar. All of the various attributes uh, are going to be there. So I have to fall back on what the smartest people I know tell me, my constituents. Smartest people I know. They're the people I listen to. I'm not listening to the advocates. I'm not listening to those people. I'm not listening to those people who express that negativity of the fake winner at me. I'm going to listen to them, and I'm not going to support this today. Thank you, Councillor Squire. I have Councillor Turner. Anyone else? Thank you, Your Worship. And thank you, colleagues. I think this will be a very interesting debate. I, I'm very intrigued by the viewpoints, and I know it, uh, uh, it polarizes a little bit. As we see uh, from our survey, uh, from the responses, from the emails that we get, from the communications, from the discussions we've had, it's polarizing there, too. Uh, I don't prescribe to the, to the viewpoint that, that this is a, going to be a utopian system by any means. But I think there's challenges to every electoral system, whatever they are. And we have to figure out what has the least amount of challenges. What's the least worst system, I guess? So for me, um, there was a question that, uh, that hung out there. And it was a question that resonated. Uh, and it's a question that, that's a very valid question. The question was, what's the issue we're looking to solve? Is this a, a solution looking for a problem? I think there's two problems, two issues that we're looking to solve with this. And for me, these are the ones that, that are deepest. Uh, one's a question of transparency, and the second's a question of mandate. The first part on transparency, and I'll, I'll, I think we've all gone through something similar as, as it took a, a lot of pre-election jockeying to get here. And uh, in, in the lead up to the nomination, there was a lot of discussion about who would carry the mantle of kind of the ideology that, that I carry and that I bring to this council. And what would be the challenges if multiple people with the same ideology ran in the same ward? Well, obviously, that has the potential to split the vote. And there were discussions. There were discussions about who would do that. But they weren't out in the open. So if you take a look at what happens during, uh, I don't know, the American elections with primaries, or if you take a look at our Canadian elections and the federal and provincial uh, levels, there's nominations in order to carry the mantle for your party. Those are very, very open and out front uh, functions. That doesn't happen in a municipal election. And that worries me. And we, we talked a lot about transparency and bringing transparency to this room. 
And I, I think for me, this is one of the things that appeals to me in a ranked ballot system. Because there are a lot of voices that were left out of the actual frontline debate that I really think even people who, who share somewhat my ideology would have been able to lend to the discussion and I would have liked to have heard from them. The second was a question of mandate. Well, there's a reason that the parties use this to choose their leaders. I know we're not going to get your first choice necessarily right off the hop, but with a ranked ballot, it gives us the opportunity to have the most solid support for the candidate that ends up being a counselor. There's debate about that, but at the end of the day, we don't have a party system here. We have a very individual system. And so we, we need to figure out how we're going to do this in such a way that allows us to not see the vote splitting, to be able to, uh, to have a, a critical mass of support, and to talk about a mandate. Because we hear all the time, well, you don't have the mandate to do this. You don't have the mandate to do that. It's difficult because we represent one of 14 wards, or as the mayor in his circumstance gets to represent citywide, who does have the mandate? And what does a mandate look like? Well, we want to be able to firm that up as much as possible. So these are the two reasons that I really support ranked ballots. With respect to simplicity, take a look at the ballot right now. It's a dog's breakfast. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what we do to it. <laughs> it's already a dog's breakfast. It was a dog's breakfast when we had, had two counselors per ward and we had four controllers and a whole raft of people on it, plus trustees. Well, we still have the trustees on there, and people still have to pick multiple candidates, especially in the English uh, public board. So the question of whether people aren't going to get it at the ballot, I, uh, I have a bit more faith in the electorate. I think they can. I think it's pretty straightforward. I think whatever's set out in front of them, uh, they'll be able to handle. I don't think it'll deter people from the, from the ballot box. And at the end of the day, if you want to treat it the way you did with the old ballot, you can still do that. Just pick one. Just under the wire, you had five, minute, five seconds to go, Councillor. Thank you. Uh, additional speakers on the first round. I have no one. Deputy Mayor Hubert. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I've really enjoyed this conversation so far, and uh, it's been really interesting. Uh, uh, to to my esteemed colleague, pragmatics versus ideology, uh, preferences and mandates, and uh, this is a really healthy conversation to be having. And I listened quite intently through the public um, uh, participation meeting we had. Um, I was very clear uh, at committee some six, eight, I've lost track six, eight weeks ago when we set the process in motion that I felt we were rushing it. And I think to some degree we are trying to get answers as quickly as possible. I, I spoke with uh, our deputy clerk and some of the questions that they've asked that were asked at the public participation meeting. Um, they've yet to receive answers on those questions uh, that concerns me. I heard a number of assertions, and I'm not going to repeat what um, others have said, and I've dug behind the assertions, and I haven't necessarily been able to find the data, um, the evidence to back up those assertions around less strategic voting, for example, or a less negative and more positive process. I, I mean, I, I appreciate them. I think they're, they're um, to me, almost, they're statements of um, a preferred future. Um, they're statements of something that we'd like to see going forward. But I'm not sure I see the evidence of them in the data that I have certainly been exposed to. And I've read quite a bit on the, on the topic. One comment really uh, bothered me. And with the greatest of respect to my friends at the Urban League, that we try this as a pilot. I think that's disingenuous. This is not a pilot, ladies and gentlemen. We don't, although in some jurisdictions they have pulled it back, 
That would be like me standing here in 2008 or 9 and saying, hey, let's remove Board of Control as a pilot. And then four years ago, after we've tried the pilot, try and put that back in. And I, quite frankly, that is the proverbial genie back into the bottle. I just, this is a change that we're making on a go forward basis. The other comment, I have three uh, points I want to make, but one problem, I, I, and it's partly to Councillor Park's point. We have to be very careful. I see the stickers that say London leads. And please, if someone votes against this, which I probably will be, that does not label them as a non-leader. And so I think we have to be careful how we position this. Every single one of the 15 members of this council are leaders in the community. And yes, they've been elected to do that. And sometimes you're going to agree with them. And sometimes you're not going to agree with them. And sometimes it may be more with some and less with others, and that's OK. That's just part of it. So here's my three points, Mayor. One. I question whether $322,000, which is the stated cost in the, in the uh, clerk's report, with a large question mark around software development, which has not been answered to me. So I would, I would hazard, as I see quotes come in from time to time, that it's, it, let's just call it 400000 just at a guess. Councillor Usher raises some good points about um, additional resources and what's going to need to happen. The clerk has factored a lot of that in, so I'm just kind of putting it around $400,000. Is that the highest good for this council? Is that our highest priority for what is a non-budgeted uh, $400,000? Two, my highest concern is the integrity of the election. London may be the first one to use this particular approach, but the clerk seemed to indicate that London will be the last one in the province to announce its election results on election night or the day after because of the process. There was no certainty that we would actually be able to report out that night. That was very clear at the public participation meeting. So I have some concerns around that. I have some concerns around certification of the votes, and Ms. Corman has spoken to that. I have some concerns. I've read the material coming in. I have. And there's examples, even with Divinion voting, that they're not absolutely sure. I've read some of their material uh, and of uh, where they're at in the process. So I have concerns around the integrity of the election. And for me, that is huge. That is probably my second highest question mark. But my third one is this. I have sent out um, uh, an email a week or so ago to just my Just going to pause there for a moment, just if we could have a motion to extend. Thank you, Councillor Ridley. Second with Councillor Usher. All those in favor, go ahead, Deputy Thank Mayor. Thank you, colleagues. Is this. And I heard clearly from the majority of my constituents that this is not what they're looking for in 2018. And so on that basis, I won't be supporting it uh, this evening. I appreciate uh, the views of my colleagues. Uh, I do. Uh, I know we use it here. I know um, uh, uh, various parties in Canada use it to select their leaders. I think that's good. Uh, that's fine. That's their decision. But for the reasons that I've made, I won't be supporting it tonight. Uh, I, I do, though, think that um, the aspiration of having uh, less strategic voting, uh, less negativity, and more positive campaigns are good ones. And so uh, having more diversity in our campaigns are good ones. Um, but I just don't think that we're ready for this at this time because of not the philosophical, not the ideological, but actually the pragmatic concerns that have been raised. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Ridley, again on first round. Any speakers? 
Thank you, Mayor. I'm not sure what's going to happen tonight, and I think a lot of us sometimes sit around this horseshoe and you kind of count votes or, you know, our colleagues declare what they plan to do, so you see that. Um, and I wasn't sure until I came here, I'm still not sure what I'm going to do, um, because I always come and I listen to people's points, and I always get frustrated when people say, I'm not going to do this because I haven't had an opportunity to make any points yet, and they've already declared their position. So then I get in the position of saying, why do I stand up here and try and convince people? But um, that aside, I'm going to say, you know, the, I've heard a couple of things argued both ways today. We've heard um, this will cause negative campaigning. We've heard this won't cause negative campaigning. Um, I've heard people say that it's confusing and other people that say it's not confusing or it's less confusing. So I go to a couple of things, and I, I think I've said it before, I kind of go to the grandma test. If my grandma would get it, does it make sense? If, in this case, I think within 20 seconds, my grandma would know how to vote. I'm not concerned about confusion on that one. Um, my biggest concern come here is the cost, right? When it's kind of an open-ended, we don't know what it's going to cost, that's something I have to be accountable to, to the community. Um, so a question that I have um, to staff is with the motion that's before us, is there any ability to cap the cost? When we go out and tender, can we support this, go out in single source, but if we can't bring it in under a specific number, could we revert back to first past the post? Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, and, and the answer is uh, you have uh, until today to pass the bylaw. If you pass the bylaw, it would come into force in 2018. Uh, but once you have that in place, you cannot turn back any bylaw you pass. Even a repealing bylaw would not be effective until 2022. Okay. I still don't know what I'm going to do. Um, I know that I attended the PPM. I spent my Saturday here just last week, and I think, you know, there was a clear calling from the public saying, this is something we want. To me, the majority of the people who spoke to us uh, spoke in favor of it. When I read my emails um, from the community, when I hear concerns, it's people who more often than not don't understand or haven't had the opportunity, they just say, you know what, I don't get this, why are you changing it? Um, and the people who are saying, yeah, I get this, or yeah, I want this, are passionate about it and they understand it. I think, for me, one of the key factors is that by making a change, we're not taking anything away from the public. People who still want to just mark one spot can do that, and people who want to mark and rank multiple people now have that option as well. So I think there's going to be a couple more rounds. I encourage my colleagues to continue to be open to debate. Um, if people already know how they're going to vote, then we could vote now and get on with our night, or we can continue to actually debate, listen to the points, and you know make a decision in the best interest of Londoners here today. So if we're going to do more rounds, please be because you're open to debate and not just because we want to hear each other talk until midnight. Thanks. Councillor Helmer. Oh, well, thank you very much, and certainly I wanted to hear from my colleagues and see what they thought about this change. I'm one of the councillors, I suppose, who actually campaigned on this particular change. It's something I advocated for during the election. Uh, I signed the petition that was circulated by 123 London uh, at the time saying I supported ranked ballots, uh, and I still support ranked ballots. Um, I think what we've heard so far tonight is a good illustration of why no municipalities have moved forward with ranked ballots so far in the province of Ontario. Um, there are a lot of reasons why you want to avoid making a change. A lot of uncertainty around some things and certain aspects. And there's, frankly, an infinite number of arguments you can make to kind of plant some uncertainty and doubt about whether, number one, the benefits will be realized, and number two, the costs of the change can be contained. Um, and I would be the first to admit that there is no guarantee that you are going to get a lot of these benefits that are claimed by proponents of ranked ballots. There's a degrees of probability, right, where you say, I think that this is, this is likely, I think we could get that. And I think it's important to emphasize that no one so far has made any arguments in favor of first past the post as an electoral system. I haven't heard anyone get up and say that this is a great system for these reasons. 
you know, it's cheaper, it's simpler. I don't know. I guess that's some of the implications of what has been said so far about ranked ballots. But I have to tell you, there's some consequences to first past the post. And I would not be one to suggest that Councillor Squire would not have gotten a lot of second choice votes if he was running in a in a ranked ballot election. It wouldn't have been the councillor with a mandate over 50%. I, like, I think that's quite likely. So I don't, I don't know why, who's saying that and why they would say that, especially if you're trying to convince someone. It's not a very good argument. Um, I, I think what we, we need to focus in on is what are we pretty sure we're going to get if we switch to ranked ballots? Number one, we're going to get more information from voters about their preferences. We're not going to get less information. We're going to get more information about what the voters want, what their preferences are. I also think we're going to see more candidates. And that's what Councillor Turner was talking about, where you have some people who say, I don't, I don't want to run because I'm worried that there might be somebody else who's like slightly better than me, but we agree on a lot of things, and I don't want to divide up the votes. And that is to the benefit of incumbents. Right? We're now all incumbents. A lot of us, this is our first time being incumbents. It's always to the benefit of incumbents because there's only one incumbent in an election. Sometimes there's not nobody. But if there's an incumbent, there's only one. And the rest of the people are challengers. And what happens is that the challengers divide up the other votes that are not supporting the incumbents. And the incumbents get reelected time and time and time again. Now, you can look at that as a good thing. Right? Sometimes it provides some degree of political cover so that people can make what are frankly unpopular but important decisions uh, and survive to continue to be a councillor. Uh, in other cases, you can see it as a negative where you say, you know, people stick around for 30 years and they've been on the council forever or on the school board forever. And really, we've got to open it up to more people so that more people be participating in our democracy as representatives. So I'm, think, I'm quite certain that we're going to see more candidates. And I'm quite certain that we're going to get more information from voters about their preferences. It is no guarantee of certain kinds of outcomes. It is no guarantee that there will not be strategic voting. It is no guarantee that there will not be negative campaigning. All these things can still happen, and they're all part of our political culture. But what it does is it opens up the electoral system so we can get more information about more candidates. I think that that will lead to better decisions. I believe in the collective decision making of the electorate. And I think if we give them more choice, and we collect more information from them, that they will make a better decision overall, and especially over time. I am not persuaded by the arguments that this is too complicated. People rank things all the time in their life regularly. The ballot is not that much more complicated. It just has a couple of extra boxes where you indicate your second and third choices. It's not difficult. The counting is a bit difficult, but we're going to run it through a machine to do the counting, optical scanning, which we've been using for a while. The difficult part in optical scanning and counting is the optical scanning, not the counting. The algorithm for counting, according to the Ontario regulation, is not complicated. The algorithm that Facebook uses to serve you up content in your Facebook account, that's complicated. The algorithm to do the counting is really not. And even to call it an algorithm is a bit, is a bit much. Um, I think we've got a good opportunity, and I think one of the reasons why London has made it this far in the process and other municipalities have dropped off earlier is that we had a huge change on our Look council. For an extension, we had... please. Moved by Councillor Cassidy, seconded by Councillor Hopkins. All those in favor, please go ahead, Councillor. Where we had a huge change on our council, we had a whole bunch of new people come in. And uh, a lot of us have never run for re-election. And a lot of us are open to changing things that, frankly, do not benefit incumbents. And I think that's what, something that's unique about our particular council. I'm sure there were other councils where there was a similar change, but perhaps not something that's been sustained up until this point. I want to speak briefly, and this is a very real example from the last election, about the perverse system and consequences of first past the post that we're using here in London right now. So running into the 2014 election, uh, I wanted to run. I was very unhappy with my previous councillor. Uh, I didn't like the direction a lot of the decisions were going. There's a lot of kinds of policy things that I disagreed with on the council. And one of the first steps in a first pass the election when you think you're going to run is you start thinking about who else is thinking about running. And you start talking to people. And I had a number of conversations with people who were thinking about running, who I'd heard were thinking about running, uh, including with one woman, Cheryl Ruth, who did end up running. But before she declared that she was going to be a candidate, I met with her. I talked to her about... You know, you're thinking about running, what kind of issues are you interested in? Uh, and she has some similar questions for me. And I'm trying to figure out if I can convince her maybe she could support me, you know, instead of running. 
Now, to her credit, she did not do that. She ran. She ran her whole campaign uh, well into the summer. I thought she ran a good campaign. In the end, she decided to drop out of the election and support me because defeating the incumbent was more important to her than being the counselor. Right? And frankly, I think she made the more difficult decision. She decides to drop out and, and support me. I continue on. As it turned out, I was successful and the, and the incumbent lost. That is an artifact of the first past the post system. And what has happened there? Right? First of all, I try and talk this woman out of running for politics. I'm not successful. She decides to run. Then she decides to put the community ahead of her own <clears throat> desire to be the counselor and support me, even though you know, we didn't agree on everything and we still don't. The overconfident guy stays in the race and she is the one who drops out. That is an artifact, that is a consequence of first past the post. In a ranked ballot system, she could run all the way to the end, no problem. Some people want to choose Cheryl first, they can. And maybe I'm their second choice, maybe I'm not. Some people can vote for me and their second choice is Cheryl. And the voters will decide who's actually going to win in that election versus us talking amongst ourselves, us making our own decisions about who's going to run and who's not going to. And that is a systemic thing. That happens all the time, repeated over and over again in all kinds of circumstances. And what happens is the people who are overconfident, the people who are well connected to money, frankly, it was very easy for me to put together the campaign money I needed to run a campaign. That's not true for everybody. It's not true. I came out of major gifts fundraising. It was very easy for me to raise money. I don't have any problem asking people to support my campaign. Other people do not have those built-in advantages just by luck and circumstance. And first past the post makes it harder for them. It is very difficult to succeed in that. Ranked ballots allow more people to run. It allows voters to decide who the representative should be. It collects more information from voters. So there are all challenges, all kinds of challenges in terms of making any change. Um, this one, I think, is very manageable. Coming up with the algorithm, that's a very manageable problem. This is not expensive. The additional costs so far, we've heard a range from maybe $150,000 to maybe $500,000 plus the hundred fifty. That is 0.05% 0 .05 of our annual budget. We can handle that. We just had a surplus of $5 million, and that's pretty regular. We have surpluses regularly. We have contingencies to allow for these things. This is a very manageable amount of money to be dealing with, and it's an important thing, how we elect our uh, representatives. Since people have been talking about their consultations at the ward, I'm in a very interesting position because I can tell you I stood at the farmer's market talking to people for, I think, four or five hours on a Saturday, um, and it was overwhelmingly positive in favor of ranked ballots. Now, I will tell you, like I'm talking 68% of people in favor of changing, 24% of people not sure, 6% of people who are opposed. Now, I do not put a huge amount of stock in that specific consultation because frankly, it's at a very particular place in the city, and I think you gotta look more broadly to see how people are thinking about ranked ballots. But even when you do look more broadly, and you look at our own consultation, 50% of people in the survey said, yep, we should switch to ranked ballots. That's a very, very high number for changing the electoral system. Usually when you ask people about electoral reform, the numbers are much lower than that. They're Can in favor of electoral reform. a motion to extend, please? Councillor Cassidy, seconded by Councillor Park. All those in favor? Sorry to interrupt, Councillor. No problem. <coughs> um, they're in favor of electoral reform, but maybe not necessarily any specific change. And that's what, another reason why electoral reform has been so hard in Canada at all levels, not just the municipal level with ranked ballots, but at all levels. You know, change gets frustrated in many, many ways, and generally the arguments around fear, uncertainty, doubt, right? At a certain point, somebody has to be first to change the electoral system at the municipal level and show people whether it works better or whether it doesn't. You know, I, I look at the evidence we see from other jurisdictions, and it's helpful in trying to understand what could happen but until we get results in Ontario, until somebody changes in Ontario, how much can we really learn from, say, San Francisco? I think it's very positive and encouraging. I think that's what we might see here. But I'd like to find out for ourselves. If you want to see more candidates running, and you want to get more information from voters, then I think I would hope my colleagues will support the idea of doing ranked ballots. Councillor Morgan. Um, 
Thank you, Your Worship. And uh, uh, following Councillor Helmer's always uh, an easy thing to do when he ticks off a number of the points that uh, I wanted to make. So I'll start with um, thanking the um, thanking my colleagues for allowing us to get to this point, um, and thanking for the public for the engagement that they've done. Uh, regardless of how you feel about the decision tonight and regardless of how you vote, I think it was a worthwhile endeavor to engage the public on this issue, to have the consultation, to put us in a position tonight to actually debate, make a decision or not, and that is a decision that we have before us for the voters of the City of London. Whether we do it or not, um, we'll decide tonight, but we've given every opportunity for that engagement, every opportunity for us to check off all the boxes to actually make the decision, and, and I certainly will respect uh, whatever the vote is tonight, uh, and stand by the majority vote of my colleagues and, um, and, and re respect, of course, all of the comments that are made by everyone here. Uh, I want to emphasize just a couple of points that were brought up. Um, the algorithm, I, I want to echo some of the comments that Councillor Helmer made, is that it's, it's, not, it's not a complicated algorithm that needs to be made. It might be 25 to 30 lines of logic to, to count the ballots. Um, it, it's... it's it can be played up to be something very complex, uh, but it's actually very simple. For anybody who's been involved in computer coding, for anybody who's tried to work with an Excel spreadsheet, and my colleagues know I like Excel spreadsheets, it's, it's not something complicated to code. It just has to be done. Um, the idea of voting for one, two, three, when, when I did my public consultation, um, and certainly I'll recognize that the public consultation is a function of who shows up at your public consultation. It's not a representative sample of, of my ward or the city or anything else, nor is the survey that we have in here, nor is any of the other uh, work that our colleagues have done. But it gives you a feel, it allows you to go out and it allows you to discuss the issues, it allows you to find out what are the questions people have. And there's a couple of, I think, myths about what we're going to do that I found through the consultation that people brought up. Um, one is people really want to know whether they can still just rank one person, right? Uh, Councillor Helmer's right. Uh, for those who want to choose to give more information and rank uh, a larger slate of preferences, that's good. That's more information that the electorate can provide. Some people don't want to do that. Some people just want to give one piece of information. So they will be able to do that under the regulations and under the way that we will proceed if they want to check off one box, that's fine. Now, when they check off that one box, um, something else someone said is, I just want to mark my X. And, the, and they were insistent on wanting to mark an X. And we haven't marked an X in London for multiple elections. In fact, when you look at the sample ballots that the clerks have produced for both the first past the post ballot, which is based on uh, the previous election, and uh, the ranked ballot, and if you only want to check off one box, it's pretty much identical. Um, it's when you go to, to add that second and third choice that you've got to do a little more work on the ballot. And like Council Turner said, the ballot is already, you know, complicated. It has been, especially back when there was the Board of Control and multiple member of districts. Um, the testing period. So is there some unknowns about the algorithm? Certainly there is. Um, what we do have is time. Uh, and the clerk at the public participation meeting uh, answering a question said, that they're planning on spending an extra six months potentially uh, testing uh, the equipment. So th there's lots of time to test. There's lots of time to ensure that this is right. And I wholeheartedly agree with what uh, our city manager said. And, and I've been thinking this for, about this for a while. If London is indeed the only municipality to move forward with this, there absolutely should be an ask of the province. Uh, both some legislative permissions, since we will be the only one in Ontario to do this, to give us some flexibility. Uh, I think there should be a request on costs, certainly. Um, if you're doing something that everybody else in the province is going to learn from, that there's a common good argument here to say, let's put up some funds. Now, this happens all the time, uh, by the way, at the provincial level. We put our money forward, uh, things like Dundas Place, and then the province comes along and they fund a portion of it through whatever their programs are. It's not hard to ask for a little bit of funding. There's certainly clerks across the province, if we do this, who are going to want to come down and, and watch it, because if it's something we do, you can be sure that other municipalities are going to take it more seriously in 2022. So I think that there's an ask there. I think that that's a debate that we can have uh, and a discussion we can have about what that ask looks like. Uh, but I certainly think it's appropriate if we're the only municipality to move forward. Uh, the reporting out at the election um, is brought up. And, and I, I chatted with some people about that since it came up at the, at the, um, uh, the, the public meeting. How about a motion to extend? Moved by Councillor Park, second by Councillor Rasher. All those in favor? Opposed if any? Apologies and, for interrupting, Councillor. Yeah, no problem. Thank you, colleagues. Uh, it, it wasn't something that people were really worried about. 
the way we report out now, it's the media who usually makes the call on who wins the election. Uh, they look at the results, they say, I'm declaring this person, that person. I remember sitting there getting interviewed and, and they, they called my election based on the advanced polls. And I said, I've run an election where I got last in the advanced polls and, and first in the other ones, and I am not comfortable with you calling my election right now. I remember saying that actually on the air. And so, you know, the clerk didn't actually certify and sign off on, on the actual report on the election until like November 4th. It was almost a week later. Um, that certification and validation of the election takes time. The production of the results and the calling of who wins for those who have majority is going to happen very quickly. The only circumstance where it's going to take longer is if there's a very close vote between one of the transfer of vote rounds. Um, if the two people at the bottom of the ballot who might drop off are within you know, 30 or 40 votes of each other, that might take some time. Um, but those circumstances uh, could be rare, uh, although they could happen. And, and I'm not really concerned about that. I think we'll know pretty much the majority of the election results that night. Um, and then the clerks will officially certify them when they do because they're responsible for the integrity of the election. They'll make sure that it was run right and the people who won were supposed to have won. Uh, the, I don't think this should come as any surprise to members in the community. I, I know there's some questions. Where is this coming from? What's happening with this? And like Councillor Helmer, um, I remember during the 2014 campaign, I, I went back and looked at some of the media reports on this, a group called 123 London wanting to make ranked ballots an issue, and they wanted to make it an issue, is because they wanted the people elected to pursue uh, giving ranked ballots in, in 2018. At that time, it wasn't even an option. Uh, the province had to actually give municipalities the option, but it was something they were considering uh, and had given permission to in the, um, in the Toronto Act, but not the rest of the province. And so a group of people said, we'd really like to have this as an option. That was in June of 2014 and carried through, and there was a number of, of reports on that. I decided that, you know what, I'll sign this petition, I'll put it in my campaign, I'll campaign on it. And, uh, and I remember telling people, hold me to account on this one, because when I'm elected, I'm gonna be an incumbent, and for all the reasons Councillor Helmer mentioned, incumbents like the current system. I, I mean, it elected us, like, it's, it's obviously great, um, you know, it, we were successful in it. Uh, how can you not naturally think this is a good election system uh, if you're successful in it? Especially candidates who, um, excuse me, <clears throat> sorry. I'll just leave it at that on the, uh, the incumbency. So then we proceed as a council to add this to our strategic plan, as Councillor Casti had mentioned. We proceed to engage and draft uh, a correspondence to the province and our submission on electoral reform, which we included a whole bunch of things to give London the option uh, so that we could make a decision as a council. Uh, we, as was stated, we've tried it with our own uh, uh, committee selections. Uh, we've talked about it. I know that I've engaged with uh, the ministry on, on what the regulations would look like. I had a lot of interest in this myself and, uh, and was active on it. And now we're at the point where we can make a decision and, uh, and certainly I am going to respect every single thing that's said here. I will be certainly casting my vote uh, based on uh, you know, my feedback, my thoughts, the history on this, the promises I've made, and the engagement that I've done. Um, but I will respect every single vote that my colleagues cast. I don't think anybody here, no matter which way they vote, is not a leader. I think we're all leaders on council, and I, and I hope that no one who is either reporting on this or talking about this afterwards, um, it will be a council decision, whether it's a yes or a no. And, and that will be something that we all have to respect. And that is something that our procedural rules say we're going to, we're going to respect. We're going to respect the decision-making process. And because of that, we respect the result of it. So I'll respect everything my colleagues have said. Now, one of the reasons I will be voting uh, for the motion that I moved is because I think we can all agree that there are certainly people in London who want ranked ballots. Whether you think it's a majority or not, uh, whether you wanna look at, at the cons consultation you've done or not, there are certainly people out there who say, I'd like to have this as an option. And when you go back to the, the fact that this ballot will allow someone to operate in the same way that a first-past-the-post system did, they'll have that option. For everybody else who wants to express more preferences, allowing them to move to ranked ballots will give them that option. And that, to me, uh, covers off more of the people who provided feedback on this than, than otherwise. That's only my opinion, but I think that giving people the option to express more preferences, whether they choose to do that or not, uh, can only be a good thing, uh, and uh, certainly is one of the reasons I'll be supporting that tonight. And I'll engage in the debate again later, but I will listen to, to the points of my colleagues. Thank you. Councillor Zaifman. 
Thank you, Your Worship, and uh, apologies for being late. Some days uh, recovering from concussions are better than others, so I uh, just need a little extra time today. And as well, you may have noticed me wearing sunglasses. It's not dis I'm not trying not to show any disrespect to anybody. It's just these lights are a little bright sometimes, so just to clear that up. Um, pardon? Hey, maybe. Um, I wanted to start out addressing this tonight that um, I have no care if London is first to do this. I don't, I mean, I've you know, spoken to many people, I've spoken to my, some of my colleagues. I don't think there is a driving interest to do this to be first in something. The reason that this has come has already been well stated by a number of my colleagues. Um, there's many reasons, very positive. Obviously there are some counterpoints as well. Um, and I think Councillor Turner said this well earlier, that doesn't matter what system you choose, there are ultimately going to be issues with any system you use. And in my mind, this system eliminates some of those problems that we currently have and enables us, I think most importantly, to empower the electorate. That is the main reason that I want to support moving ahead with ranked ballots. In the two elections that I have participated in, the first one resulted in the winner winning with 25% of the vote, approximately. I have no idea how 75% of the ward truly felt about that. If ranked ballots were available, I have no idea if I would won. That's not really my care. It's more I would have preferred to know what the voters actually preferred, rather than someone winning with a 25% mandate. In my own case, in this election, I won with 39% of the vote. And frankly, for me, I don't consider that a significant enough mandate. It's not 50% plus one. And in my election in the last, in, in 2014, the number of times that I spoke to people that said, you know what, I like what you're standing for, but I know this person, so I'm gonna support them. If, it was, if they weren't in the race, I would vote for you. This enables them to not be forced into choosing one or another, and then their vote being discarded because the person that they chose initially didn't end up winning. This just gives so much more power and choice and enables voters to really have their true preferences shown so much better. And in my mind, that is just such a clear reason to move ahead with this. You know, we can argue, I think, debates and points about uh, what may be good or bad about the system, how it may work, how it might cost. I mean, uh, uh, Councillor Helmer and I were chatting recently uh, looking at how this algorithm might work. I spoke to my brother, who's a mobile app developer for Android. He kind of looked and said, oh, yeah, I could do this, no problem. I mean, now that's anecdotal, you know, he hasn't done it yet, but he sort of blinked at bat, nearly batted an eye at it, that it wouldn't be too much of a problem. So having someone in my family that is directly involved with creating algorithms and coding and programming, it doesn't really concern me too much. And that's from my own ability and knowledge, which, I'm, which is good. Um, I think, to be honest, that's the main point that I wanted to make. I think when we're looking at this system, we have an opportunity now to move ahead with something that can empower the electorate and you know, take, take power away from incumbency. I mean, that point's been made already, but I think this creates more parity, it creates more opportunity, and those are things that we should really be looking at supporting. Um, and I, again, the last point I wanted to make was just around the timing of when the election results come out. It's very possible, it could be delayed, it may not be. Those are questions we still have to consider that we don't know just yet because we don't have everything in order just yet. But it's really interesting to me that we look at the federal system where ballots are counted by hand still. And somehow that works. So if we're really concerned about time and technology delaying things, then you know, this just really doesn't seem like a problem to me if that's the problem that we're looking at as identifying as a barrier to this. And that's the last point I will make. Thank you. Great to have you back, Councillor Zaifman. Just under the wire, you had a minute to spare. Councillor Hopkins. Uh, thank you, you, Your Worship. And I want to thank all my colleagues here for the debate. I always find it very engaging, and I really listen intently, and I always appreciate all the comments around this issue. So thank you very much for that. Um, like Councillor Zaifman, to me it's not important that we are the first to do this. That, to me, does not have any relevance in my decision-making that, uh, that London be the first. Uh, it, um, it's, what is, is, this is a very difficult decision for me. 
because I do believe in electoral reform. It's very important to me. I have a campaign for 15, 20 years for other candidates, uh, uh, campaigning, even for myself, the importance of promoting civic engagement has been my top priority for many, many years, and I will continue to do that as well. Um, it's, the importance has always been voter turnout. We haven't really spoken too much about that around the horseshoe tonight. Uh, the last election, 43% came out, a large increase from the previous elections because Londoners wanted a change. That's why we got voter turnout. And they got the change. It wasn't ranked balloting. It wasn't other systems that we introduced. It was people going out and voting. I was brought up in a country uh, where it's mandatory to vote. <laughs> and I think it's a good thing. That is what a citizen is. When uh, you become um, a Canadian citizen, like myself, you go through the testing, and the answers and the questions and the answers that you have to give are all about our uh, government system. Who is your MP? Who's your MPP? Who's your councillor? All those things are important. And uh, that is part of becoming a citizen of Canada, to also get out and vote and understand that process. And you are educated becoming a, a citizen. Um, maybe a lot of you hadn't had to go through that process just being born here. Uh, that must continue regardless of rank balloting. It's only aspir aspirational to say that it reduces strategic voting, reduces negative campaigning, encourages more candidates to stay in the race. To me, it's aspirational. It has never been pro proven. I heard um, tonight a number of times, you, someone says um, this, the other one says no. It's all aspirational because it hasn't been proven. And I hear too that how do we find out? Well, we should do it. I've heard from residents in my ward, the majority, um, questioning the concerns about the costs. We know here tonight they will probably be a bit, bit uh, more. Um, also, I've heard from the public saying that council um, wasn't given the mandate to um, sort of implement rank balloting. And uh, what's the rush? I want to thank Councillor Morgan uh, for introducing rank balloting and corporate services. I know I sat there in the first year, and I found it quite interesting going through that process and how it works. And I found it a little difficult to understand. Uh, it took me a little while, but I eventually understood it and uh, was interested in how we rank. But um, a big part of that uh, was an education system. Um, I've also heard from residents as well to vote yes to rank ballots. Uh, the main reason is that it would better reflect the desire of the majority of voters. It may be, but I understand that most of the time the person who comes first does reflect the person that most people choose at the first choice. In other words, does it change the election outcomes? I need to be, con be convinced that. I don't know if we've gone back and studied the outcomes, if that first person, I think most of the time that first person does become the, um, become selected. These are some of my concerns that I've heard here or reinforced what I've been thinking about. Move for an extension, please, Councillor Park. Thank you, Turner, all those in favor. Apologies to interrupt, Councillor, go ahead. Education, big part of it. I had to learn through the past couple of years how rank balloting works. Um, maybe uh, it could be confusing for most of us given that the Board of Ed trustees will not be ranked. Will it uh, be up to candidates to educate the public? And they themselves need to be educated on rank balloting. 
that's great that we get candidates um, coming out, but they also have to be educated because they will be in turn promoting what rank balloting is because that is going to be the first time in the city that we're doing rank balloting. And it will be an important piece, I think, to the education process and how it works. Um, how are we motivating people to get out and vote? I'm going to always go back to that because that to me is a big priority. Did you know that um, to have a referendum, I've heard tonight the word referendum. I hear it all the time out in the media, referendums. Well, we need 50% of people out to vote before we have a referendum. Sure, we could go to the OMB and challenge it like we did with the Board of Control, but getting people out and voting is a must. Wards that have lower, vert, uh, lower uh, voter turnout will still not be represented. I know I often ask myself the question, 50% of what? It gets back to how many people came out and voted. That is so important. Um, is this a trial project? I understand it is not a, pro, a trial project, and I think that is important that the public understand that. If, that if we introduce rank balloting, it's gonna happen. It's not a pilot project. Part of the concern I have, what is plan B? If the software fails and we are not comfortable with the results, how do we define what will make us confident with the results? I'm not sure about that. I know it's a test. We'll probably figure that out. But how confident are we going to be in the results? Sure, let's try it. But will we have confidence in the results? And what will that plan be if we do not have confidence in the results? And getting back to electoral reform, which I support, how have we looked at other forms of electoral reform? This, we haven't had that conversation. Sure, rank balloting has, has been the discussion, but there are, are other parts of electoral reform that I think is important. I'm open to looking at rank ballots, but I'm not rushing into making a decision without ensuring that it is the best option, and I'm not there yet. If you could convince me right now <laughs> that we will have at least 43% of Londoners getting out and exercising their vote, um, at the next election, uh, maybe I can be convinced. I agree with Councillor Helmer completely. Uh, there are no guarantees. I think no matter what we do, we're never going to have the guarantees that we are looking for uh, with electoral reform. So um, again, I really appreciate the debate, um, but uh, those are my comments. Thank you, Councillor. Anyone else for the first round? I think there is anyone else for the first round. I'll go to Councillor Armstrong and then Ben Holtz on the second round. Again, I'll try to be brief, uh, Your Worship, and to the point. Um, there's been much discussion about how ranked ballots work. And um, standing here today, I quite frankly don't know whether it's a good, a better system than what we have now, or if there's a, another system out there that may even be better, because we didn't do that exercise of looking at other systems and even during the uh, public participation meeting we had a person come forward and said I think there's a better system yet but we didn't get much detail about that so that's that's one thing and and your worship I I want to point out I've been here when changes happen I was here when board of control was eliminated I was here when we went through the process of going from two councillors to one and changing our ward system and, and all that. So I've been involved, directly involved in change. And change is very important and I support change if as long as change is well thought out, well planned, well researched and you are going to get the best results. Now my problem with this situation and again I, if this was on the ballot in the future I might vote yes to it. But the problem is this isn't on a ballot. I haven't talked to my constituents about it. It wasn't an election issue the last election that I felt I had a mandate to stand up here and argue for this for 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 a big change. And this is the biggest change that I, you know, that you can have pretty well. And so uh, 
I certainly don't mind looking at this in the future. My problem right now is they sit here and all these documents started uh, being uh, looked at uh, and researched. And, and, and a lot of these cities that looked at this looked at it last year. They had their debates. They got their information. They got the questions answered. I'm standing here looking at an issue where I was at the public participation meeting. Questions weren't answered. We didn't have the answer. The city clerk had a couple questions that at the time, I don't know if she has the answers now, but they were asked and, you know, there isn't an answer. Then, then here we are going to vote on uh, what could be a, let's see, this morning when we came started the meeting was 500,000, maybe more. Here's 322. That's like 800,000. Then I get information, Ottawa, looking at the same thing last year, 3.5 million. Now, yeah, they're a city, uh, you know, I think they're uh, 800,000, but the process to implement what you're talking about would be much the same. So what's the number? You asked me to vote and support something that you can't tell me what it's really gonna cost. Is that good government, I ask you? You don't know what the cost is. You're going into it blind. But I have a feeling this will be a better system. Well, it may be. It may be. But you know, if anything, you left it too late. This is the last day. Really, you're asking me to vote on a decision on the last day when you can't give me a real number, not even close? And I talked with somebody in the computer uh, uh, who understands uh, programming, and you know, he says this could cost a lot of money. And it's a trusted uh, family member who spent quite a bit of time in uh, in uh, this particular area, and I trust his uh, his advice. It says here, cost it based on ranking a maximum of three candidates, legal size ballots, printed double size. If the number of candidates or rankings increase, the number of ballots will increase. And so the cost, so will the cost. So that, that's uh, sort of uh, noting, in, uh, not including the uh, algorithm development and testing results of software. This thing could get real expensive. And once you say yes, you're there. Now I hear people on this council very concerned about no, having all the information before we make the decisions. And, and so I, it troubles me that now we, we have an issue in front of us where we have unanswered questions. We, have, we don't know what it's gonna cost. How does that possibly make sense to be making such a decision based on on, on a lack of information. And as I say, thank extension. you very much. Extension, you've got 10 seconds left. I'll be quick with 10 seconds. Go for it. The last thing is, if we did anything wrong here, if we knew about this and thought this was important, this debate should have happened a year ago like all those other cities I mentioned earlier. So we could have got the answers to our questions and nailed down the numbers. And we didn't do that. So now we're rushing tonight. Final decision, not good. Okay, thank you, Councillor Armstrong. Uh, Councillor Van Holst on the second round. Point of information. Information. Yes. Councillor Zafman. Um, just through the clerk, I believe we did have. Sorry for the glasses. I believe we did have meetings on rank ballots back in 2015 at Corporate Services Committee, if I'm not mistaken. Clerk Saunders. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, we did um, provide some comments to the province with respect to rank ballots, and um, the, re the regulations with respect to rank ballots were not released until uh, the fall of this of last year, so it would have been difficult to, to um, bring something forward when we didn't know what the regulations said. Councillor Van Hall, second round. All right, thank you very much. So every good debate usually occurs kind of on a skew where we've got uh, a couple issues running crossways and it seems like we've got that happening now. It's whether or not rank balloting is worth trying and whether or not we should take a risk on uh, purchasing the products, being the first one to do this and take that financial risk. So that's, 
that's a couple things that are going on there. I'm going to ask through the chair to staff if um, if this were to happen in, say, 22, I mean, I could put up a Part D and say, let's implement this in 2022, and uh, then we wouldn't have to worry about this rush. Do you think that those kinds of, uh, that program would be prepared and we'd be able to move forward because there'd be more likely that that would, that would be done? Would we have more information uh, and, the, and the kind of information that people are asking for? So, could this be implemented in 2022? With, with greater financial certainty. Uh, I can't answer the with greater financial certainty, but I could certainly uh, indicate to you that the way the regulation is drafted, you could pass a bylaw as early as tomorrow to deal with uh, ranked ballots for the 2022 election. And but you could not do that. Oh, sorry, Your Worship. No, nope, thank right. you. I think that's yeah, you, good. You could not do that today. <laughs> thank you. You would have to wait until tomorrow. Until tomorrow. Yes. Okay. And on the financial side of things, Mr. Hayward or Clerk Saunders. Thank you, Mr. Chair. That's still a very difficult uh, question for us to answer because the the software hasn't been created. Um, would would. The companies have more time to create it and give us a number between now and 2022, likely, but um, I, I couldn't answer for certain. Thank you very much. I don't know that I expected certainty, but, uh, <clears throat> and, uh, and I didn't get it either. Thank you. So coming to this, I suppose I, I would be content flipping a coin uh, for, for this year or not. And I'm, I'm, I'm hoping it, it doesn't come to the point where uh, everybody commits themselves and, I, and then I've got to decide myself and then I, I flip it. So uh, let's look at some, some of the issues here. Uh, I, I could probably spend an hour debating myself on this one. So, but I'm going to give you some of the points that, uh, that I think are significant. Uh, one is uh, we're at that kind of situation where are, are we going to blow up the shuttle by, by moving quickly on, on this one, because it, it's quick. Uh, the, the other thing I want to talk about is, uh, is, is, confu is the confusion idea. I've got a, a New York Times article here. It says, analysis finds incorrect use of, of choice voting. And when I looked at the, the results from Minneapolis, uh, What's, what's interesting is that someone's provided some uh, uh, data that showed that uh, people make a lot more mistakes when they move to the, to the ranked balloting. So there's a lot more errors on, on how, to, how, to, how to fill out the ballot. And when, uh, so maybe, uh, and it's also based on the, the wards that was done. So the low economic... Um, stratas of the wards have a harder time, had a harder time with it. And so we're wondering if there's, if there's a problem in, in, that, in that area. So, and it was maybe seven times as many mistakes on the ballot as it was uh, when it was just first past the post. What they also notice is that, that that number stayed pretty well into the next election as well. So people are consisting of having troubles even though they, they did another campaign to educate as well. So, so that's, that's a bit of a concern, right? If we're, we're disadvantaging some people because they, they do find it confusing. Now, I don't find it confusing. I understand rank balloting very well. Uh, I understand its limitations. Uh, I understand its you know, theoretical benefits. I understand the algorithm. I understand how to make the algorithm, algorithm in a number of ways. Uh, but I also have a pretty high IQ. And unfortunately, that's something that averages out. And what I mean by that is there's somebody in London who is tall and good looking and won't understand why, if they already know who they want to win, they have to pick two other people. 
and they don't they won't really get the the argument about split voting how that works or and certainly won't understand why this system will be the solution to that and i i think that may be a concern if we if we have people who don't want to participate in the election because they they find it confusing or think they have to do something that they don't understand why I, why i have to pick these these three votes if that if that's a problem as it seems to be uh, in some places and comes out in a number of articles in the US there's a concern that that balances out some of the 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 theoretical gains so there's there's promises in ranked balloting and i and and i, I know what they are and i spent quite a bit of time um probably two days trying to come up with a description of ranked balloting so i could put it out in my newsletter and uh, i did that sent it out to pretty much the whole ward and with with an advertisement of my my ranked balloting open house and so uh, and in community letters i had advertisements to that as well uh, one person attended uh, throughout the ward so I I don't I don't know what to necessarily make of that that piece of information but it did take a while Can we get a, a motion for extension please councilor Parks second by councilor Usher all those in favor opposed if any go ahead councilor sorry to cut you off Thank you um it it did take a while uh for her to 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 understand how how it was going and we had you know quite a bit of time together to to do that um the the rank balloting has been introduced and then repealed in a number of uh of US cities we've done it and they decided not to as a matter of fact as councilor usher pointed out there's been uh, a number of canadian cities where we've done something other than this uh it was uh cities where we've done either proportional representation or a single transferable vote which is really like you get to pick two choices and then it goes on and uh in Calgary, Vancouver, uh New Westminster, Winnipeg, Victoria, Regina, Moose Jaw, Edmonton, those are places where in the past that's been done and 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 repealed. So I guess we're looking at our, uh, our ourselves as leaders but then we also want to see are we actually leaders or has somebody done this before and then decided against it and if they have why and in the US of course there's been a couple of these and this is a motion I'll read from from Pierce County it's got the stamp and uh it's a city of 1 million it says whereas IRV which is uh, instant runoff voting that's what they're calling it um for us uh was first used in Pierce County during November 2008 general election and whereas the cost of running the IRV portion of the 2008 general election was 1,692,000 and whereas the IRV uh portion uh provided to be expensive, complicated and confusing and the results of the IRV races were not available for weeks following the ele election date and whereas 66% of the 90,738 voters responding to the auditor survey indicated that they did not like IRV and whereas council finds the amendments to the charter to eliminate instant runoff voting and to restore the primary election for the county uh, elected officers will serve the needs and best interests interests of the citizens of the Pierce County therefore we're going to turn it around so there's an instance where somebody tried it in one election decided this is not this just did not work out and uh, and then decided to get rid of it so I I would hope if we do it that's that's not that's not the case that 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 would be uh that would be an unfortunate result um some some good points uh made on either side the of course there's some evidence that negative campaigning still goes on I mean that that is good if if the leopards uh the leopard community started using rank balloting would they change their spots is sort of the is sort of the question uh I I would hope so so theoretically we've got some some things that that would uh, are good I I don't know if they'll necessarily uh pan out so that's that's a concern my other concern is that what if I'm going to make a decision 
it's, it should be what's, what's the best thing for London. And that there is the cost, there is the cost to it. So that's been brought up in uh, Minneapolis. They said three, three and a half dollars per person. If that, I don't know if that was per voter or per person, but if it's per person for terms of the population, uh, that'd be about a million dollars for us. And you got to ask yourself then, what, what else could we do with that money? Um, and then what's our goal? So what are we trying to achieve by this? There's a few, a few things we can gain. And, and I've been talking in support of, uh, of the uh, ranked ballot election because it... Okay, thank you. Um, well, let me throw something out quickly. I, I mean, a million dollars divided by uh, 14 divided by four uh, would be about $17,000. So with that same amount of money we would use for uh, education, you could actually increase the, uh, the stipend of a counselor by half again, and something like that might actually attract more, more, more voters. So there might be other things we can do in, in this instance. Uh, I'm, I'm, I've got a number of other points to make, too. You're, you're and just I can make them minutes. on both sides. If you'd sides, like an extension, I'll, I'll But I'm not going to ask for an extension. I'm just going to let, let the debate go on, uh, and, uh, and we'll see how it goes. So thanks okay. for the comment. Thank you. Any other speakers for the second round? Third round, Councillor Armstrong. Thank you, Your Worship. Your Worship, through you to uh, the clerk, I just want to be clear on these numbers, and if, um, if anything's wrong, perhaps you can. Consultation, 150,000. Tabulators, no number here. Paper ballots, 42,500. Vendors cost, 10,000. Staff resources, 70,000. Poll workers, 50,000. Total, 322,500. Through you to the clerk, do you sort of recognize those as the, the potential costs that have sort of been out there? And then the second part, of course, is when we came here this morning, the uh, city manager alluded to an additional potential $500,000. Are those numbers sort of in the field of what we could be looking at as far as costs? And can you give me a little, give the public a little understanding of where we are on costs with that $500,000? Through you, Mr. Mayor, not to speak on behalf of Mr. Hayward, but I believe he meant the total of 500,000, so 300 plus an additional to get us to 500,000. And that was um, uh, assuming a, a, an amount for the actual software, how much it would uh, cost to, to create that, and uh, that, that's the number that, uh, that he was talking about. So he wasn't talking about 800,000, he was talking about a total of five. Fair enough, through you to uh, uh, the city manager. I'm just wondering, and I don't know if you've had an opportunity to look at uh, some of the information that's online available to the public about Toronto and Ottawa and some of the numbers that they were coming up with, like a million and a half to three million, like numbers like that. And that was, I'm assuming, they would have to be involved in the development, in the software, etc. And so... Um, I'm just wondering how our numbers sort of, how do we come up with numbers like this? Is it possible that down the road through you to the city manager, is it possible down the road that we could get a shell shocker, that this proposed system could be upwards of a million and a half to two million dollars? And I'm only asking that based on the, the reports that came out of Ottawa and Toronto, et cetera. Would you have any thoughts on the potential number going up? I'll go to staff for uh, your answer. Thank you. Um, so the city of Ottawa, city of Toronto, similar with the city of Mississauga, they have a number of machines that they own. The machines that they currently own and under contract with are a later model than the ones that are currently available. So that cost includes replacement of those machines and upgrading the machines. So it, it, they're going out and purchasing brand new machines or 
improving the machines that they currently have. We have the ability that we're, we're currently not bound by a contract. We can just use the most current model of the machines, which we used in the 2014 election. Thank you. Um, I guess the other thing I wanted to ask, I uh, received this t today, I think, or yesterday, um, was a guide to rank ballot elections for municipality, for Ontario municipalities. It's a, a guide to, from the Ontario government, but apparently this guide is, is just, it says draft, this is a draft. It actually hasn't been released as the guide yet. And I wonder, as the city clerk, I think it was you that forwarded to this to me. So we don't have an official Ontario guide as of today, or do we have one today? Okay. Um, that was a draft that was provided to us late Friday afternoon from the, um, one of the staff people at the ministry to assist us. And I understand from Ms. Corman, it's now final and it is now posted. As of today? Yes. So I think the thing is, it would have, this guide, I'm glad I've got a copy. I don't know if the rest of the council all have a copy. They do. Okay. In this guide, it talks about the cost, the potential costs, and, the, and that as part of this process, the, the public needs to know the potential costs. But... Um, I don't really think we do. I don't think we will know the cost until, you know, we tender for the product. We won't know the cost. So I think we're sort of, in my mind, I think it would have been important to get to the point in the process, if you did want to do this, that we're standing here and I can tell my constituents that this is $1.5 million dollars I'm not supporting it or that it's a million dollars and I'm going to support it but I can't do either because I really don't know for sure what this is going to cost and so that's what was important about and now I'm at the point where I'm thinking we really missed the boat that we should have been having this discussion maybe a little earlier so that all the questions could have been answered What's the real cost? Because, you know, we don't usually come into meetings and find out that the cost of something is going to change. And, again, we don't know for sure what the costs are. And I think we should have had that information nailed down. Because, like I say, I don't feel comfortable voting on something where there could be a huge surprise down the road. And then... What am I supposed to say to people? Oh, another 500000 or another million dollars. Well, we didn't really know when we decided to go ahead and uh, implement this. How do you explain that to somebody, that you're making decisions when you don't know how much it really is? It's a very difficult, uh, a difficult one, and I, I don't usually, in fact, I hardly ever remember being in, the dis in that position where I'm asked to make Councillor decisions. Councillor Armstrong, Thank unfortunately, you. I'm going to have to ask no, for an extension. No, I'm good for now. I'm sure there'll be a fourth and a fifth. Uh, thank you. Uh, next on the list is Councillor Squire. Sorry about that. I do have Councillor Usher next before I go to your worship. I just want to ask a quick question because uh, one of the things that I brought up at the beginning was something to do with training and my understanding from uh, in Minneapolis and San Francisco is that they had to train the individual voters. They had to go door to door to train the individual voters. I want to know from our staff if they anticipate that this is going to be necessary. And the reason I ask this is because a lot of the people whom I speak to identified to me, and I think that they identify to all of us because I've seen it on the emails, that it's confusing and they're going to need some training on this. And the, the, the idea here is that it's going to be almost like when we are doing census, where people have to go door to door and explain to people how to fill out a bill. It's not because these people are dumb. I listen to some of us around here, and I'm not 100% sure that we all understand exactly what's going to happen. For example, when we talk about the majority, it's not a majority, it's a plurality. 
and, and there's a whole bunch of the votes that are not counted on the final analysis. So we need to be able to appreciate that and understand it. So um, through you, Madam Chair, I just want to know if the clerk anticipate this at all, because I think it's going to happen. And that's what I was talking about at the beginning. And I noticed that Councillor Armstrong or Councillor Van Holtz mentioned the $3.50 per voter. Thank you. Through you, Madam Presiding Officer, uh, I do not anticipate that staff will be going door to door um, to train people on the election. What we will need to do is have a heightened uh, communication and uh, plan, and we will have to ensure that our uh, workers that are working at the polls, um, we will have to have sufficient personnel there to assist as the voters going in to explain them the difference between it. But I do not anticipate we'll be going door to door. Question to our legal people then. I just heard the clerk said that they're going to have people at the poll. And my understanding is that this is not legal. I can't go to the poll and ask somebody there to show me how to vote. So <laughs> I need to understand this. I think the public need to understand this, unless I misinterpreted what the clerk just said. Yes, you did. Uh, in no way will the election workers be telling someone how to vote. What they will be doing is educating them on how to fill out the vote. The, the ballot and to show what the difference is. As we do it under the current election, we, we indicate when we're handing them the ballot, you can choose one for this race, one for that race, and the school board, it depends on if it's two or one. So we would be educating them on how to fill it out, not who to vote for. Well, through you again, Madam Presiding Officer, uh, it sounds to me that and I may be misinterpreting this. It sounds to me that this is going to be a long line outside of each polling station then. Because again, I'm saying to you that what I'm hearing is that a lot of people today, maybe by October next day, they're going to get the picture. But today, they're relatively confused. They're very confused about what it is. So if they don't know by that time, you know, it just sounds to me as though we're going to have to hire people to do some training. And it may be before the voting, or it may be after the voting. If it is after the voting, it sounds to me as though we have going to have long lineup at each of the polling station. That would concern me. So I don't know if this clerk can put me at ease with that, but uh, I just don't want us to be doing anything illegal at that point in time. The The... Staff will have to, prior to the election, prior to voting day, educate the candidates and the public as to how a ranked ballot, how to fill out a ranked ballot and how the process would work. So we will definitely, which is, is reflective in our increased cost, part of that increased cost is that education and the communication plan. But like at any election, when the voter runs, walk, goes to the poll and gets their ballot, the worker will say, explain to them, if you, you choose one for mayor, you choose one for councillor, and you choose either one or two, um, depending on what ward you're in for a school board. So that, that would continue. Okay, uh, thank you, Councillor Usher. Uh, next on the list is Councillor Van Holst. Oh, sorry, Your Worship. Uh, your Worship. <laughs> I'm starting to accumulate a few names here, and uh, I do apologize, Your Worship. I just think you're getting really comfortable in the chair. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much. Um, you know, colleagues, uh, one of the comments I want to make is that I've heard about a fourth round and a fifth round and a sixth round. I said a joke at the beginning of the meeting about a filibuster, but um, I'm starting to worry that maybe that, that prediction might come true. This is a decision that we have to make today. I want to say that I am uh, so impressed uh, with the level of debate this evening. We are at our best when we're asking questions, when we're prodding, when we're probing for information, and that's exactly what I've seen this evening. Uh, people have come so incredibly prepared uh, to this debate, and it's clear to me that each of us has spent a great deal of time thinking about where we want to go with this decision. And I think that that uh, is exactly what the citizens of London 
were looking for in 2014. They were looking for a council that could focus on the big ideas, that could move our community forward, that could ask tough questions, that wouldn't necessarily do things the way that they've always been done. I've been quoting Churchill a fair bit, and there's, there's a question about whether he said this or, or he didn't say this. Uh, but I think that the quote, uh, either way, is, is an appropriate one. Oh, you know, what Churchill may have said was that democracy is the worst form of government, except for all of the rest. And part of the debate tonight, we've been talking about the problems with various systems, with first-past-the-post system, the challenges related to that. We've been talking about the problems with a ranked ballot system, and some others have even brought up potential other systems, directions that we could move in. And what I'm struck with is, there isn't going to be a perfect system for us to move to, and if we stay with the system that we have, it's definitely not a perfect system either. So the question is, does ranked ballots make democracy better? And I think it does, for all of the reasons articulated this evening. I've heard a lot of arguments about slowdown. I've heard a lot of arguments about maybe we should look to 2022. But the most compelling arguments are the improvements that we can make by moving forward with ranked ballots. So then the question comes down to timing. And I've said this for a couple of months. Uh, it's really not a question in my mind of if we move to ranked ballots. It's a question of when. So we have to ask ourselves, is this something we can do by 2018? And I think the answer is absolutely. I understand the concerns that we've heard uh, from staff very clearly. But we've got a lot of time between now and Election Day 2018. So there's no reason, in my mind, to wait. Yes, we're the first. That's interesting. Uh, it's not surprising. Because again, the citizens of the City of London elected a new mayor. They elected 11 new councillors because they were looking for positive change. This wasn't a ballot question. That's right. Many of the decisions that we make on a regular basis are not ballot questions, are not questions even that some of us campaigned on. But what the citizens did was elected us to use our best judgment on their behalf. Based on the information before us, based on the fact that we supported moving in this direction in our submission to the provincial government, I don't see any reason why we'd wait an additional four years to get to a system that would make our local democracy better. So I'll be supporting the motion that's on the floor. Uh, I'll leave it at that. And whenever the chief, the presiding officer rather is ready to give up the chair, then, uh, then I'll be returning. But it might, it might take a while. She's asking for one more hour, I think. <laughs>
in, uh, in almost, uh, in 13 cases, uh, 12 of them won, and they won, they were ahead at the beginning. Now, it's not the same, I mean, the dynamics of the election may be, may be different, but in that case, the person who, uh, who won started out at the beginning, and after all the rank balloting, ended up, ended up winning. In the, in the case of, except in one instance in, where, in which case um, the minority candidate, candidate lost after, after the rank balloting process. So there's, there's, there's a concern. Another concern that we're going to get is, of course, the, uh, the majority argument. So we're going to get uh, some pushback or some flack um, when it happens that someone's elected through the rank balloting process and they're not, they're not uh, someone who gets 50% of the vote because there's uh, what's called exhausted ballots. And this was another one of the arguments that was uh, made by Mr. Mr. Levin is that if there's 10 candidates and you pick three and all three of yours are eliminated, then, then your vote your vote doesn't count again. And people will complain about that because the system's been slightly misrepresented. Uh, <clears throat> I don't have a problem with that. I, I, I think it's an improvement uh, about what we have, but we should come clear that uh, we don't pick a winner unless it's 50%, but there, uh, there, there'll come a point at which there's just one person left and, uh, or two people and the person with the most votes, votes will get that. And uh, Councillor Usher pointed out some examples of that. So, so that would be an important thing to realize is that some people may say, after we do this, well, it's not what you promised to, it to be, so we better make sure that we're not, we're not promising it, uh, something that we shouldn't. Um, <clears throat> I think there's going to be some confusion, not because it's necessarily hard to understand, because it's just different. And uh, I know myself, when I have to start programming in a new version of a language, it's confusing. Not because of any other reason than it's, it's different. Now I've got something different and it's confusing. That's going to come up. Um, are we going to make a difference? Well, I teach physics and that's probably one of my favorite uh, courses to teach. Uh, there's physical laws, and uh, I think there's also spiritual laws. One of them is that uh, people get the leaders they deserve. And I don't, I don't think that rank balloting will necessarily make a difference in that. And so we wonder, is it, is it going to make a difference? Um, and maybe last point I'll, I'll mention, Councillor Helmer was saying advantages uh, first past the post. Well, one of them is the ability to do a, almost a referendum through an election. If you've got two candidates and one of them is very strong against uh, an idea, one is very much for, I could probably come up with an example uh, in, in this council coming up, but I won't. Um, Did you then, need an uh, extension, Councillor? I do. Thank you. By Councillor Cassidy, seconded by Councillor Helmer. Just, I'm going to just call the question. All those in favor? Okay, I am seeing some negative votes. I think that's an indication of uh, the length of time, but it passes. Please go ahead. Okay, thank you very much, and, and I appreciate your indulgence. Uh, so we've got two candidates on an issue, very strong candidates pushing one way or another. Um, in, in a first-past-the-post, we will get a decision uh, one way or the other on, on that issue. Uh, in rank balloting, I'm, I'm not sure, because you're going to have also uh, a candidate who uh, perhaps is waffling in the middle. And so when I go out to vote, if I'm for this, I'm going to vote for the for candidate, and then I'm not going to pick the, uh, the against candidate second. I'm going to pick somebody else. And if I'm against it, I'm going to do the same thing. So we might get people coming up the middle that, that don't really represent... Uh, a, a clear decision, and so that that is uh, that is something that might might work against us. Uh, on the uh, on the positive side, and I, I guess I did say I would say a, a positive things. The the arguments that that we've heard uh, against it um, were often ones that I think would be in favor. A lot of the arguments. Well, I haven't seen the data. And uh, if that's the case, then we should come up with the data. As a, as a scientist, I like doing experiments, so I'm willing to do that. Now, if we haven't looked at the, uh, 
you know, if we don't accept the data that's, that's somebody that from the other cities, maybe we need to do it in Canada, that would be okay. I guess I do have one other question, though, is we're stuck because of this that we have to decide today. Um, let me ask a question through the chair to, uh, to our uh, city manager. If um, we were making this decision not for today, but for 2022, uh, uh, we could put out an RFP and find out how much it's going to cost before we committed. Is that, is that correct? Sort of a yes or no question. I would suggest if you uh, didn't make the decision on 2022, but uh, asked us to look into it, yes, we could then go out for an RFP and come back with a cost, and then you make the decision to go to 2022. Okay, so that's, uh, that's another, another possibility. So I know there's people very passionate about having this, having this now, but then again, we don't know what the cost is. Uh, it does look like if we wanted to put this off for um, the next election, we could do the RFP, we'd know exactly what the costs were and, uh, and have, a much, have a much better idea. So that, that, that would be a decision we could, we could do as well. And, However this goes, there will be an opportunity to, uh, to uh, approve that as well. Colleagues, um, I think we're into the fourth round. I'm getting requests from uh, some of our colleagues for a break. I think we're very close to a decision-making point, but that's up to everyone around the horseshoe. So if I get any additional speakers, then I am going to call for a 10-minute break and uh, we'll reconvene. I have one speaker on the list at this point. It's Councillor Cassidy. If I have any additional, then we'll take a break. Councillor Cassidy? Thank you, Your Worship. And I just want to point out that this is only the second time I've spoken, and the first time I spoke was probably less than a minute. So, <laughs> whatever. So I know a number of, of colleagues have spoken about, about uh, whether or not we should do this just because we're first. I don't think anybody has argued that we should do this just because we're first. And in fact, I've heard a number of arguments that we shouldn't do this because we don't want to be first. Well, if we do it in 2022, we'll be first again. Somebody's got to be first. And since nobody's doing it in 2018, somebody's going to be first. So that shouldn't be part of our argument. We, we just have to do what we think is best and vote the way we think is best tonight. Um, I, I, I just want to address a, a point that Councillor Van Holst made, Mr. W Mr. Your Worship, and about the outcome um, that a number of the elections where the, the, the first round didn't achieve 50%, and yet the leader in that first round won anyway, won the election anyway. And so the outcome didn't change. It's not about changing the outcome. It's about clearly showing the, the will of the electorate. So I think if somebody gains 40% of the vote on the first round, and then they end up, because of the second choices, uh, winning the election in the end, again, it's a clearer show of what the people really uh, wanted. And, and I believe we had, a, you know, we had a young gentleman up here in the, uh, at the public participation meeting who spoke about receiving only 18% of the vote when he won for um, a, a school board trustee position. And then he continued throughout his term of office to... to um, to, to his mandate being uh, questioned, that maybe he didn't, he didn't legitimately win the election. So I think when you have the runoff uh, vote or the second choice uh, ranking or the third ranking, whatever, to provide somebody with the 50% plus one, it eliminates that argument and people can, can then go forward and do their jobs without being qu continually questioned throughout their term in office. And, and as for um, the analogy that uh, Councillor Van Holst made about the, 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 this, this issue, somebody's strongly for it and somebody is strongly against it, I think uh, the idea of a single issue election is extremely rare. And, as, and especially when you have an incumbent uh, running as well, a lot of the, the, the vote is going to be based on that incumbent's performance. So you're dealing with multiple issues and you're dealing with performance as well of an incumbent. So I think all of those things will come to play and it's just too simplistic to say that it could come down to a single issue. And Councillor Helmer made a very good point about uh, increasing the number of people running will actually um, 
increase the 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 kinds of uh, conversations that go on, the kinds of debates that go on. You'll, we'll hear a broader uh, spectrum of opinions and positions, and I think that will make for a, a more informed electorate, and they'll be able to uh, to rank their votes accordingly. And as we have heard multiple times. If nobody, if somebody doesn't want to vote, they don't have to. I'm glad that Councillor uh, Park and Councillor Morgan brought up the the fact that this really isn't the the, uh, the algorithm itself. And I believe Councillor Helmer mentioned itself. Also, the algorithm itself is really not a complicated issue. I've also spoken to somebody in software and asked him after the public participation meeting, how complicated is this? Because it really sounds complicated that we have to develop this algorithm that's conforms to Ontario legislation. And this person said to me, Maureen, I could do it on an Excel spreadsheet. And then to, to hear um, Ms. Corman say, it's an, ex it's an Excel spreadsheet. Just confirmed exactly what I heard. So it's really, really not that complicated. It's simple math. And in grade three, all three of my kids came home with homework that says, mom, we got to do these rankings. I got to do a poll. So what do you like best? What's your favorite snack food? Is it popcorn or is it potato chips or is it licorice? So they're doing it in grade three. I think we can have confidence that the voters will understand this and it's really not that complicated. Okay, I am gonna call it at 7.30 if we if we're continue uh, to debate because I do think we're getting close to the end. I have Councillor Turner, Councillor Armstrong I think wants to be added uh, as well. Go ahead, Councillor Turner. Now, thank you, Your Worship. Just really quickly, it, um, just for myself and, and for my colleagues, I guess, uh, uh, just a confirmation of the question of certification uh, of, of the, the ballot technology. Uh, my understanding is there's, there's not um, a provincially uh, designated certification. Ultimately, it's a question of whether uh, the administration has tested appropriately to ensure that uh, that in all the various scenarios and through a rigorous uh, assessment of, of the, the ballot boxes that they return the appropriate responses and at that point we certify the technology. Is that correct? Clerk Saunders. We would certainly be um, certifying the results of the election but yes we will go th through as we always do a lot of testing of, uh, of the program and the machines to ensure that it it's working appropriately. Uh, thank you. So uh, that, that's helpful. The, the algorithm required exists. It's being used on uh, tabulators uh, in, in the US and in Canada, uh, by the way. And the Conservative Party of Canada just sent out uh, a ranked ballot to all its membership to return. And it's a, a fill in the dot. It will be returned back. It will be counted through a tabulator. It exists. I don't. Uh, I think to to state that this is going to be uh, a significant, crazy expense. I, I think is maybe a little overstating it. I, I think it, it's not much of an extension to say that we could easily find that algorithm for our software tabulators or find tabulators that can use the algorithm. Uh, just to cap off. Uh, it's interesting hearing my colleagues because I think the only thing I haven't heard really was a, a, a very uh, robust and, and uh, loud argument about why first past the post is best. It's been a challenge of what the, the shortcomings of ranked ballots are, but nobody's really said to me that first past the post is better for all these reasons. It's the one that's the system we have. So we have some institutional inertia. Uh, and I'm going to close just by, by a quote that always, uh, sticks with me, and, and I, I hate to quote people, especially here, but uh, um, Rear Admiral Grace Hopper, she said, the most dangerous phrase in the English language is, we've always done it this way. I, I think we need to, to take a look at what we can do to move forward. So thank you. Thank you. I have Councillor Armstrong. <laughs> Any others? Thank you, Your Worship. I'll be very brief. Um, uh, Your Worship, <laughs> uh, long and short of it, we don't know what the true costs are. So we're making a decision as a council, voting on an issue without the true costs. So um, that, I, in this situation, especially I'm troubled with. Um, the other issue, again, Your Worship, all these cities looked at this issue had staff reports, so on and so forth. 
You heard them, Toronto, Guelph, Ajax, Barry, and I could go through the list again. They all said, not right now, not right now. I believe Toronto also is, is if I recall the, uh, the um, recording of their council meeting, I think that they were going to ask the province to see if there'd be help with it. And I don't know if they ever got an answer back on that issue or not. And I don't know if the city clerk would be aware of whether or not anybody's asked the province, any of these cities inquired to find out, can we get some help with potential costs? And would the, through you, your worship, would the staff be able to answer that? Go ahead, clerk. Through you, Mr. Mayor, um, we certainly did ask for that during the consultation process. I sat on, uh, on the focus group for that, so that certainly was asked uh, at that time. But since then, I, I'm, I mean, the province is certainly aware that we would like that. Um, I don't think that's any secret, but have they directly asked? I'm not aware of that. Have better, I'm not clear on this. Have we directly asked the province at any point for financial assistance if we move ahead with this? Yes, through the focus group process. I was involved, so yes, I did at that time. And the answer was no or yes? Through Mr. Uh, Mayor, it was through a, a staff process they couldn't answer. They just said that they would bring that information back for consideration. When was that through you, Your Worship? 2015, just not sure which month. So through, to, through you, Your Worship, so, so through 2015, no one has followed up with the provincial government and asked them if they would be willing, if London moved ahead with this, to help us pay for the costs. Am I correct? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, I'm not sure if no one has. I have not directly, if that's the question. I haven't directly. Well, Your Worship, I would have thought that that would be something that we should have followed up on. Another unanswered question. So the answer could be yes, we'll pay for the whole thing, or no, we won't give you a nickel. But now we're going to follow up and ask, because I remember the earlier conversation, we're going to follow up maybe now and ask whether or not, there, whether or not the province is going to pay for this or part of it. Again, this is the last day, and we're being asked, to make decisions without important questions being answered that were even looked into at an earlier date. Councillor, troubled by that. I won't speak anymore. Thank you, Worship. Again, I, I just can, I can't support this at this point. Thank you, Councillor. I sense your frustration. I want to point out that um, uh, any councillor, uh, the mayor, could have brought forward the request that the province be asked to cover the cost at any time up until this day, and if an error was made, it was an error made by council. Yeah. And so this is not uh, something that, uh, and I want to make sure that I'm not interpreting your comments to be directed towards staff as missing a step, because I certainly do not believe that they did. Your Worship, I want to make it very clear, it's not directed at staff. We are in charge of the system, and, you know, we should have been following up on it if we felt that there was a... I mean, the question is being asked now, so it's not the staff's responsibility. We're here to give direction as a council, and I understand that. I'm just frustrated that if this was an important issue, an important question, and even a question that was asked in Toronto, that somebody should have got an answer to it before now. And I take his responsibility, too, because I'm part of the team. But Good. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for providing that clarity. I wanted to be sure that um, that the comments were interpreted as they were intended. Uh, so we have five minutes before I am calling that break. I have Councillor Hubert or Deputy Mayor Hubert and Councillor Helmer. I will call a break uh, at 7:30. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to rise on uh, on this simple point that uh, uh, once again, as I said in the beginning of my comments, let's be careful that when we when we position something as a, a a strong point 
that the, the opposite point doesn't become disparaging of others. And I, I take some umbrage in the fact that, you know, we've always done it this way. Uh, so it, it, it comes off as certain ones who might not be supportive of this are afraid of change or resistant to change. And, and that is not the case. And certainly in the 10 years that I've been around this uh, horseshoe, um, I've been a part of leading significant change in the way business is done. Uh, both in terms of transparency and uh, 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 awareness. And, and many of those things have become common practice now, but also uh, the presence of a board of control or not having a board of control. So let's just be careful uh, uh, of our language and, and continue to have a, a respectful uh, debate. And regardless of the way one person uh, votes one way or another on this issue, it, it's uh, they're voting on their conscience or on their, how they feel uh, they should be voting based on what they have heard, particularly from their constituents. Uh, councillors, uh, I'm going to go to Councillor Helmer. I am concerned uh, that we may start losing members. This is going to be a critically close vote, and I think that people have established where they are uh, in the vote. And uh, so one of the unintended consequences of continuing this debate is that uh, we may lose members and, and the vote will go in a different direction. Uh, I'll go to Councillor Helmer. Just very briefly, and I, I wish it wasn't necessary to rise, but we've really talked about the cost so much, and I just want to reassure people that you know, one of the great things about doing a multi-year budget uh, of $3.5 billion is that when you're dealing with, you know, oh, we might have a cost of $100,000 or $125,000, and this is a cost that occurs every four years. It's not something that happens every year. When you budget prudently in the first place, and you think far ahead and you have this multi-year budget, it allows us to absorb things like that. Like, just think about a week ago when we're dealing with a $300,000 overrun on um, driving a sewer line uh, underneath the rail tracks. Or when we had the normal school, the cost went over a little bit. Like, we can absorb those kind of things because we're budgeting very prudently in the first place and we have a great finance team and we did a really good job in the multi-year budget. This, like the magnitude of this, is very manageable. So I hope that concerns about the cost and, you know, that it explode to, like, you know, huge amounts of money, that that's not going to prevent people from sort of voting the way they think they should vote and, and moving forward with uh, rank ballots. Thank you, Councillor Helmer. We have a motion that's been moved and seconded. I have no additional speakers. Okay, so I am going to call the question. This is the amendment on the main motion. Councillor Van Holst. Closing the vote and the motion carries nine to five. And on the main motion, as amended. It's been moved by Councillor Park, seconded by Councillor Helmer. Let's call the question. We're voting. Closing the vote and the motion carries 10 to 4. Okay, motion carries. So let's... Uh, now... Uh, colleagues, I'm, I'm hearing from both clerks that I didn't ask for a disclosure of pecuniary interest. I think I did. No, no, just we have one. one. But I'm going to ask one last time. Uh, any disclosures, just so so we're clear? No, it's to approve the clause, it's not call for disclosures. Oh, excellent. Okay, so let's have that come up, please. See, number one, circled disclosure of pecuniary interest yeah, I I, on both that. sides, and I think, oh my gosh, I swear I, I did that. Yeah. Yes, you did. Okay, moved by Councillor Park, seconded by Councillor Helmer. Let's, any discussion, call the question. We're voting. Councillor Armstrong? 
closing the vote and motion carries 14 to 6. Okay. Uh, added reports. There are none. Deferred matters. None. Inquiries. Emergent motions. Bylaws. We've got Bill 179 to confirm the meeting and also Bill 180 to move towards ranked balloting in 2018. Coming up on screen now, we'll do first, second, and third reading. Okay, I intend to call these together, if that's all right, unless somebody wants them separated. Okay, uh, first reading, 179 and 180, moved by Councillor Morgan, seconded by Councillor Helmer. Let's call the question. We're voting. Councillor Usher. Closing the vote and the motion carries nine to five. And second reading, debate, discussion. Second reading coming up in a moment. Moved by Councilor Morgan, seconded by Councilor Zafman. Are there any speakers? There are none. Let's call the question. We're voting. Councillor Van Holst, closing the vote and the motion carries, 9 and to 5. third reading colleagues coming up momentarily. Moved by Councillor Turner, seconded by Councillor Helmer. Let's call the question. Third reading. We're voting. Councillor Van Holst. Closing the vote and the motion carries nine to five. Okay, colleagues, look for a motion to adjourn so we can do this all again tomorrow. Councillor Turner, seconded by Councillor Zafman. All those in favor, opposed if any, we'll see you tomorrow night. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>